Hey everybody, and welcome to D4, where I, Dustin, and I, Devin, Cody, am a 5th edition game of Dungeons and Dragons. We're back! Yay! Yay. We hope you all had a wonderful week off, and we are indeed back. And Pride Month may be over, but that does not mean Pride support is. Make sure to go over to Die Hard Dice and check out their newly released Metal Dracona Pride Dice, Horizon Dire D20 Rainbow Dice, Magnetic Rainbow Tray, Dice Bags, Adorable Pride Creature Stickers, and more. Also, any sticker or translucent dice set partnered with Heartbeat Dice have 100% of their proceeds donated to the, pres to the Trevor Project and or GLSEN year round. Any of the other official Pride products will be donating 50% of the proceeds to those charities as well as the P Marisha P. Johnson Institute from July until the end of September. So make sure to use discount code D4DND for 10% off your purchase. And for those that do not know, July is Disability Pride Month. And this week, we want to highlight Jen Kretschmer, not only because she is amazing, or one of the writers for Candlekeep Mysteries, or one of the amazing uh, players on Heroes of the Plains, or because she's disabled. Jen Kretschmer has put in a lot of work for all of you to learn everything you need to know about accessibility and gaming resources that helps you erase your learned biases about ableism and how to avoid negative, game, uh, negative tropes towards disabled people in gaming. Uh, it also teaches you how to represent disabled characters in your games effectively, realistically, and without unnecessary, grandiose inspirationalism. There is so much work that she has done for the disabled community and in help to spread awareness to everyone else. Please take the time to check out her collection of helpful guides, discussions, and resources called Accessibility in Gaming Resources. It is her pinned tweet on her Twitter, at DreamWisp. And remember, disabled people are regular people like you and me. So be excellent to each other and allow others to have access to your games. And with that, let's hear from our sponsors. Hey, it's D&D Beyond, and we are giving away yet another Players Bundle this week. So type in hashtag Beyond for your chance to win the amazing Players Bundle that includes the Players Handbook, Xanthar's Guide to Everything, Sword Coast Adventures Guide, Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, everything you need to be a good player or stop by the DD beyond marketplace in order to pick that up yourself but in order to continue our uh, little foray into lessons on how to be a good player uh we're going to go to the land of the dead actually and we're going to pick up one of the first characters we met hi i'm jerry the kanku you may remember me from the first or well, second episode you may remember me begging for my life as I was maliciously cut down by a rage-filled barbarian. I'm Jerry, Jerry the Kanku, back from the land of the dead momentarily to give you the right do's and don'ts and what to do in your game. So let's begin, shall we? Do. Make everything you want to do clear. You don't want to confuse your DM by not speaking up. Like if you're trying to beg for your life, but perhaps your DM is enthralled in imagining a raids that keeps him from understanding your commands, what you gonna do? Maybe you're just gonna get your head lopped off there if you're not clear. It happens sometimes. Ha! Ah, life. Don't make promises you can't keep. For instance, make sure you don't go too far over your stations or waste too much time. And be sure to keep the people in the loop whenever you're budgeting for time. You know, say, don't promise your wife and children you'll be coming home that night. You never know what's gonna happen. <laughs> Do choose an appropriate race class of character. Try to avoid anything that might have a meaty curse behind it that prevents it from speaking or flying away. Anything that interferes with your ability to beg for mercy or run away. Why would you do this? Why do I have to suffer for the for, for those sins of my forebears? As does my entire race. I could live that night, Gramps. But you had to steal something from hell. Don't get too attached to your character. You never know when sweet life will be whipped away from you in an instant. But you know you just got to roll with it. Maybe you'll be reincarnated as something less likely to be mutilated by a raging demon of death. Like a bluebird. Or snail. Or maybe a manticore soaring majestically over a mountaintop. Oh, wait a minute. Those die too. I'm Jerry. Jerry the Kanku. Remember me, because I could have been something. So type in hashtag beyond into the chat right now. 
uh, do it for Jerry. Uh, do it for yourself. And if you still want to be a good player, go to DNB D Beyond and pick up the player's handbook. Or the player's bundle, sorry. <clears throat> You're muted. You're muted. It's a classic. That was a test. I was testing you to see if you were alive enough to notice. Okay, so I have a question for everybody. What are you doing with your life? Seriously, what are you doing with it? I mean, do we really have to get into that right now? <laughs> I think Not it's, an much. Thing. it's an important <laughs> thing to discuss because you could be enriching your life by going to Beetle and Grimm's Pandemonium Warehouse, beetleandgrimms.com, and investing in their latest Platinum Edition box, which pre-sales open on July 16th, The Wild Beyond the Witchlight. Y'all, this is going to be amazing. You may have no direction in life, but you know what does? The Witchlight. It's got direction. It can lead you. You can get all sorts of amazing things within this box. You can get battle maps. You're going to get text props. You're going to get phys reps, physical representations for those who haven't LARPed and may not know the term. I gotcha. Anyways, if you head on over to beetleandgrims.com, you can get in on July 16th and get yourself one of these amazing platinum editions. I've got one, two of them. I've only got two. I missed out on Waterdeep they are worth every penny and and i say that sincerely so head over there get your platinum edition on and your life will have some direction that's a goblin promise hi uh i brought my cat with me i can't really do any bits because my cat will maul me senselessly and i guarantee you that at the end of this thing she's going to be mauling my hand but before we get to that where my hand gets mauled by a cat against my will, I would like to talk to you about Eldritch Foundry, the best place to go to get to miniatures for your table. You can get make any kind of miniature you could possibly want on there. It's fantastic. They have every genre, every kind of like, you can wear hats, you can have swords, you can have guns, you can have pants, you can have, you, you don't need pants. I never had them. I never had cursed pants, no matter what anybody says. So if you want a chance to get your own fantastic Eldritch Foundry miniature tonight, put in hashtag Eldritch into the chat for your chance to win. But that doesn't work out for you, no big deal. You can put in d 4 d d as your code and get 15% off your own miniature, even if you don't win. So we all win tonight. And now my cat will savage my hand. There we go. <laughs> Thank you. Way to try to take one for the team, man. <laughs> okay, first of all, Logan, you are the only person who will not let me forget that king who because I, I, what is his name? Say his name. <laughs> Jerry. Jerry. Which... Jerry is his name. He had a family. <laughs> this just got really dark. Look, cause I keep forgetting about that King Koo. If that says anything about me, which someone I'm sorry. needs to remember. <laughs> but you want to know what I'm not going to let you forget about? Rock Punch, Rock Punch ATL. You know, the people who uh, produce our show, they're pretty cool. And they like to release videos like pretty much weekly. Um, this Pat, like one week ago, they released two videos. Oh my God, super exciting. One is directly related to us. It's the unboxing of Beetle and Grimm's uh, Van Richten's Guide to Ravencloft with D4. You should absolutely check that out because there's a lot of cool stuff in that box. And then of course, Rock Punch also went on a field trip. Check out cool stuff around Atlanta, our home city. And you can uh, see adventures at the zoo, the supernatural exhibit at the botanical gardens, and my personal favorite brewery, Orphe or Is it really my favorite, Katie? I can't even say the word. Orpheus. Orpheus Brewery. They make my favorite saison. Saison. I like saying that. And uh, you should like saying Rock Punch ATL. I like saying that more. And well, you want to know what I don't like saying? I don't like saying how I um, 
had a relapse in judgment and um, brutally murdered a king who named Jerry. So I would, <laughs> sometimes we like to live and move on and forget, okay? On the wings of a cancun. You don't have to forgive me, but can <laughs> you at least forgive? really forget? nowhere. <laughs> um, I had a bit about how to tie Jerry the Kinku and about how our shirts probably could have saved him from the raging barbarian. Wow. Because, wow. <laughs> you know but, who's not going to save you from the raging barbarian? The raging Jerry, barbarian? the Kinku. Mm -hmm. And but, the raging barbarian. Jerry couldn't save himself. <laughs> if you like what we do here, if you like the concept of Jerry the Kinku in its entirety, feel free to head over to d4dnd.com where you can find a plethora of many things that might have been able to save Jerry the Kinku. I can't promise that, but it might have. And to end this, I want to do something that was specifically requested by the Merch Moms, is tonight they wanted me to drink out of my mug. But unfortunately, I would like to show you the versatility of our products, because I use mine to hold pencils, and I, I won't be drinking pencils tonight. Thank you. Drink the pencil. Drink the That's pencil. Drink it. Yeah! <laughs> You know, we had to confront a lot today. We had to confront the, the death of Jerry and the fact that maybe we uh, don't have any direction in our lives. Okay, if you guys needed to have an intervention with me or tell me to go to therapy, I would have rather preferred this be a little more private. Me too, but here we are. You, and you know what can help with these, these dark feelings? Being distracted by playing a fun game of Idol Champions of the Forgotten Realms. You can get a code from Electron Chest right in there it might give you loot to help distract you from the ever sense of dread that follows you not knowing whether you're able to uh, find a direction in your life like a kenku that deserved to have one so go go play auto champions of the forgotten realms and go enter that code and get loot thank you we love you catkins and without further kenku murder let us immerse ourselves into the chronicles of d4 that deserved so to happen Last time, on Dark Duke Hall Daggerford Damsels, the team began by separating the group into two teams, Team Speak and Team Sneak. Team Sneak, consisting of Voss and Vinley, went to sneak into the great, uh, gated cisterns and were aided by Harold by casting invisibility. As they traversed through the dark, bridged walkways, Vinley used Phelan, her undead toad familiar, to peek around corners, noticing a few lurking, odd, acting humanoids filtering water for the town. Eventually, they found a secret door that led into an old dungeon with a few old, untouched torture implements. The area was extremely unnerving and felt oppressive, accompanied by the eerie sounds of movement from above. While cl quickly looking around, they found two captured and frail malnourished bodies of the original Morrowind Daggerford and Magus Delphin on Debarl. 
They are warned by the captured prisoners that they, the acting duchess is a shape changer and also there is a vampire within the city walls. Meanwhile, Team Speak, consisting of everyone else, made their way up to the Duke Hall Castle where they plan to meet with the Duchess Morwen Daggerford to distract her while the others investigate the castle. They hope to also read her body language to see how she reacted to certain points of information and questions in a tactful way to garner information on if she was actually behind everything happening to Indagraford or merely an unsuspecting pawn. As the group waits for more when they search the great hall they are held in and find no presence of fiends or undead. But Harold and Orkira do find a secret door hidden under the staircase. When the Duchess enters, they realize that she also does not ping as fiend or undead but her personal helmed guards that Orkira notices to have brass-skinned faces are in fact fiends. The group warns the, that the Duchess that Daggerford is under threat of vampires, but she seems unfazed and believes Daggerford is safe from such threats. Soon after, the talking begins to fade into distrust, but in order to quell suspicions, Morwen opens herself for Seisha to use her divine sense on her to hopefully gather their trust once again. At first, it is hard to tell if Morwen knows her guards are fiends, and she is simply a, or if she is simply a manipulated bystander under the will of the succubus Pinchesca. That is until Seisha makes it known that her guards are fiends, and the Duchess shows her hand, revealing herself to be none other than the blood hexing succubus Pinchesca herself. She tests to see if the group is corruptible by explaining that she has brought order from chaos in enchanting the town to become its perfect self in weeding out the weak. However, it does not seem to sit well with the party. Meanwhile, Voss drinks a potion of hill giant strength and uses a crowbar to violently rip the iron cell doors from their hinges after his attempts at picking the lock failed. A fog soon after rolls into the nearly pitch black room, revealing itself to be the matronly woman who ran the orphanage. A harrowing battle ensued above and below within the Duke Hall Castle, with null witherlings, bats, vampires, succubi, and fiendish guards, maragons. Pinchesca uses her hex blood curses to thwart many attacks against her, as well as nearly killing Seisha in one swing. Voss, thinking quickly, drinks a potion of dawn, causing his body to radiate sunlight around him, which he eventually uses to burn away Pinchesca's love, Iliana the woman from Voss's dark past. As the fight got desperate from the succubus, turning their BFGs against each other, Seisha calls forth the pit fiend, Vazka, as he takes his time, relishing and having fun, battling his former fiendish ally who turned against him years ago. Pinchesca, seeing her lover killed before her and her guards decapitated by a raging Goliath, she begins to realize she is outnumbered and tries to escape through the ethereal plane. Amused by her feeble attempts at escape, Bazka summons an Irones to track her down through the ethereal plane as he negotiates the contract over Venli's soul as they delivered Pinchesca to him. Negotiations teeter back and forth, and as it looks to not be turning in their favor, Venli sends a telepathic message to Bazka, bargaining Davil's soul in exchange for hers. At the same time, Seisha secretly asks the Stone of Golor for the true name of the Pit Fiend as she tries to convince him to release Vinley's contract. In the moment, uh, in this moment, the time release of the secret door closes to the basement, separating you from the saved prisoners making their way up the stairs. And that is where we pick up tonight's episode. Did you just try to control me? No, I tried Did to inform you. Did you speak my true name and try to exert your will over me? This I cannot allow. Do so again, and I will take it as a direct threat against me, and you know those consequences. And it is only because of your compelling arguments and obvious dedication to your word of giving me what I want that I am even entertaining you, mortal. But because of this, I offer you a counter deal. I strike my true name from all of your memory, and in kind, 
I will relinquish your friend's soul. Refuse, and I take her offer instead. As you see him point towards Vinley. I didn't hear her offer, but your offer sounds pretty good. I don't care about your name. Would rather not know it. If it gets everybody out of each other's hair and it's easier for you, I, I think everybody would agree with me that that's a pretty good deal. He yeah, looks at I every that single person. Pretty fine. Yeah, I'm cool with that. I agree. Now, granted, granted, <clears throat> granted, I don't. I shouldn't be the one to agree because I have a, a problem. So why don't you guys, who are smarter than I am, think about what he's saying and decide whether this is something we should do? Because everything he says to me sounds on the level and right. Well, I don't need this kind of. I we have enough problems. We don't need this as the next thing. No offense, Bosco. I guess as one of. The only two people here who I guess I've never made a deal with anything. How do we know the deal's real? He, we, we wouldn't, he wouldn't, he can't. You can't? That's like not against, there's not like a he, weird loophole? Oh, there is a contract involved in everything. That's what I was afraid of. So. Can I see this contract before we sign off on it? Never but of course, you will be able to read it before signing it. But once again, your other option is I accept the other deal laid in front of me. What other deal? Because what I, is this I other deal? That deal. is what not what we are negotiating. We are negotiating your terms, as he looks to you, Seisha. I have mine with her. So make your choice, my name or the soul. I want to see the choice. contract before we agree to anything. He said we would. He said we would. Let's not let's not go pushy. Um, and he's gonna look at you, Voss, before summoning anything. And what about you, Schumann? Do you agree to these terms after reading the contract as well? Boss looks uncomfortable with this, obviously, but his eyes keep going back to Finley. And then back to this. It is what you wanted, after all. Just your name struck from our minds and nothing else. That is it. I already forgot it, honestly. I will do this in exchange for one thing, your cohort carries a blade on her that I require. I need it. My cohort, meaning the ironies that I just summoned, or the whore Pinchesca? The whore. I assure you she is not my cohort. Then you have my apologies, but either and way. If my lieutenant is successful in retrieving her, then that is something that may be discussed further. Very well. And with a snap of his grotesquely black-tipped claw fingers, a small bit of hellfire ignites before he draws his claw into the air, creating a portal into one of the layers of hell once again. The room instantly becomes swelteringly hot from the fires of one of the layers of hell. And once again, you see the elf killer, now nothing more than a frail man of oil tanned leather, seared skin, covered in skin, uh, scars that clings to his bones. He winces with every step as a small trail of blood seeps from the broken glass embedded into the soles of his feet. When you look upon his face in horror as a large, inch and a half long bullet ants bore their way out from the sewn pockets of his eyes and mouth. In one hand of the fiend, uh, in one of its hand, um, okay, uh, the fiend holds a scroll of flesh bearing Vinley's contract and appears as it's plucked from the depths 
as it seems to be plucked from the depths of a frigid ocean appear in Bosca's hand. And you feel the temperature of the room drop nearly 20 degrees despite re- being swelteringly hot. In the other hand, another identical scroll of flesh appears seeping with ichor and muddy ooze that drips to the ground and causes a fetter that bleeds into the room strong enough to make you all instantly gag. And here are the two contracts plucked from Beator. You can do with them as you wish once you have agreed to this deal. What was the name that he gave? Beator? Beator. Beator. You can make a history check. I would love to. Thank you. And yes, Vinley, you can as well. I see you going for it. Uh, 15. 27. 27. Uh, With a 15, you have heard it before, but you can't quite place what it is. Uh, Vinley, you know that Beator is the fiendish word for the Nine Hells. That is the actual name of the Nine Hells. That makes sense why I would know that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it does. I knew about Orthodons or Orthons. 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 No. You watch as he pulls out a small set of thin rectangular spectacles as he places him upon his nose. As you watch, there's a new contract that sears into the flesh of the elf killer's back. He cries in muffled pain that echoes out from the nest of ants gathered in his throat, but it seems as if he cannot move while the smell of burning flesh fills your nostrils. Bosca then turns the man around and uh, an endlessly burning iron quill revealing a wall of infernal text almost too small to read clinging to the man's back. And he motions to it, our agreement. The memory of my true name from everyone living in this room in exchange for the former contracts, as well as some insurance you do not try to hold power over me again. You are free to read it if you like. Once I sign my name, it will be sealed. I'm reading that. Okay. I'm assuming it's in a language Uh, I can't understand. It is written in a language you do not understand. Um, actually, knowledge of the ages, I do understand it. So I'll... Sounds good. It is written in Infernal. Okay. Um, <clears throat> we'll send this to you, but also just read it aloud for the audience. Okay. The previous contract over the soul of Vinley Galanodel has been sequestered to the proprietor of the soul, one Miss Vinley Galanodel. For biddance of use of the true name of the pit fiend General Bosca, Lord of Dragonspear Castle, Breaking the oath of silence will render the previous contract nullified and will be seen as a direct offense against Bosca, resulting in the infernal damnation of one Vinley Galanodel soul, as well as surrenderance of one's own soul to eternal damnation under the servitude of Bosca upon final mortal death. Names attached to the contract willingly or unwillingly accept the memories modified to nullify any res- remembrance of the true name of the pit fiend Bosca minus an exempt of one memory being of the pit fiend Bosca himself. The names listed are Seisha Valispard, Vinley Galanodel, Voss, Oscar Kord, Orkira Ildrex, Veomiliana Gathala, and Golor. Oh. I'm going to point at the contract and be like, I, I don't think that's my name. Uh, just trying to be fair to you, I just don't think that's my name. And I percent, he, it's it's just the face shit messing with him. Yeah, oh yeah, no, 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 no. And and Vodka okay. looks to Harold and goes, "Oh, I assure you, face touched. It is indeed." Okie dokie. Just doesn't look right. I mean, you 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 know a lot more than I do. You've been around since all of time, so it's it's cool. No sweat. So even we. Remember that this knowledge has been removed? We'll have one memory. You will know who I am. That I am the general of 
and my title and that I exist, but the absolute knowledge of what my true name is will be stricken from your memory and you will never know that you even had it. But you will know when you made this contract. No downside. What happens if we accidentally find the, your true name again? Then I suggest you don't utter it ever. Easy peasy, guys. We have. I don't know. We do have a problem with accidentally um, saying names we're not supposed to. But we and I can have... assure you, weak magics like restoration, divination, or uh, divine of the divine will not return the memory that I take from you. Okay. Um, yeah, Finley yeah. steps up um, before anyone else says anything else. And she. Is the elf killer still there? Oh, yeah. She takes the contract, she holds it, and she takes a really big, deep breath. So it's written on him. It hasn't been peeled from him because it hasn't been signed yet. Oh, cool. No, her contract. He said, you said he brought out two he had, And he is holding them yeah. in his hands. He is oh. not giving them to you until oh. this contract is signed. Right, okay. Yeah. yeah, that was my fault. I thought he was off the back. Um, she's going to take a really big deep breath and inhale everything that she smells. And she will slowly write her name in the finest script that she can muster at this point. And almost too slowly. On your contract? Insight? Is she enjoying this? Like, enjoying carving into the elf? Does that matter? Uh, Harold, for clarification, she's signing her name into the new contract, accepting it okay. on the man's back. Uh, Bosco will be the last to sign it, and once he signs it, it is complete. Yep. And uh, you can roll insight, and Vinley, you can roll uh, deception or persuasion, your choice. You can send that to us privately. Mm, there it is. Ooh. I got a 26. Oh. Um, DMs, you should, you should check what I rolled. <laughs> Say again. You should check what I rolled. She got a 26. Uh, I don't have it pulled up. Just tell me. Just for... for oh, okay. Just the number. What I rolled, total is a one. Oh. I have a plus zero. <laughs> I'm you reading go. you like a book, baby. Yep. So what does she read, Vinley? Um, you see... Um, a lot is going through Vinley's head. And you don't think that Vinley is going this slow because she's enjoying torturing this person. You think Vinley is torturing herself with the amount of smells and the experience so that she knows she will never forget what has happened and what she was willing to do. And then she steps away and doesn't look at anyone and just walks back and stands behind Fluffy and Kuja. Because both of them lived. Silver lining, guys. <laughs> but they are not living creatures. Yeah. I'm just happy that they survived a single fight, unlike every yeah. single one of my other ones. <laughs> uh, Orkara is going to saddle over to Seisha and quietly, mostly just because of the room, not because she thinks that everyone can't hear. You're gonna be able to convince the stone to sign this? No. I'm gonna try. I don't think it's gonna go well. Can stones uh, write? No, um, but I can write for it. What if you dip it in ink and then you press it on it? And I will remind you, Seisha, with your keen mind, the contract says willing or, or unwilling. unwilling. Yeah. She's going to slip her hand into her pouch and touch the stone. Okay. Are you aware of what's happening right now? I am. And 
And you will not take knowledge away from either of us. It goes against everything that we stand for. Agma is of knowledge, not of secrets. I know. I know. I need to talk to Venley. You say and I'm going to step okay. off to the side. Okay. Venley, Sasha says she needs to talk to you. I'll walk over to her. But Cujo other... and Cujo and Fluffy are going to stay at my back. What was the other deal? I'm not going to lie to you, but I'm also not going to tell you right now. But it's a very bad one. And I would appreciate it if this all could be forgotten. You know what that means to me? Do you know, do you know what you're asking? I do. Okay. can't sign this, Benley. Would you like me to? No, but I'll be one of the unwilling people. I just need you to know that. I feel like I... I owe it to you to tell that to your face. I appreciate it. Um... I just can't allow the other thing to happen. And she's, her voice starts to raise. I can't. Um, so if I have to sign for everyone, I will. And I'm sorry. Why did you offer it if it's so dire? We all hear this? Or is this off to the side? She tried to pull her off to the side. All right. Um, uh, or Kira can hear it. Venley raised her voice, though. So yeah. Venley did. She's just still speaking softly, but you heard it. Yeah. Yeah. You heard what Venley just said. Okay. I Yeah, I assume Orkira has, like, intentionally turned her back on them, but probably can still hear most of it. Yeah. Mm. I want to be able to sign. I do. I understand if you can't, Seisha. I will not agree to this. I know. You must not let this happen. We're in the same boat in this, Golor. You must stop her from signing it. She already has. Not our names. Why are you staring at me? Having a conversation with Golar, too. It's not on board. I wouldn't expect it to be. Um. Well, I go back to the group. She just silently turns and walks back to the group. As soon as you do, I ask you for to reiterate details on it. Um, the one part I didn't get was, are our souls forfeit? If this... Only if you choose... Oh, sorry. Because yeah, I didn't... I may have been confused on that part. If you speak the name in order to control uh, or have bearing Power over Vazka, you then surrender Vinley's soul and yours, but not everyone's. It's just... That's why I asked about if we accidentally learn relearned the name. Is that all it took? or Learning the name does not nullify the, the contract. Using the name does. 
And just for another clarification, sorry, we're playing legal D and D right now. Um, <laughs> You're working with a a, a fiend. Yeah. Denial, yeah. So. And he specifically said we will remember making this deal. Correct. Yep. So we will know not to say it, even if we do stumble across it, because we will mm -hmm. remember Bozka's name, yeah, not correct. his true But correct. the contract specifically states that it's only if we use his name to have bearing over him yep. or to... So if we're like, oh, it says blah, 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 but we had no idea that it wouldn't apply. It was correct. like, oh, right. We're not supposed to say that. Don't say that. Correct. Yep. Okay, yeah. cool. Intent is important. In this Intent yep. is important within the contract. Got it. It's, this definitely does feel... It... Insight um, for those that have uh, a high passive of uh, What's let's say high? more than 17, 17 or more. Okay. Okay. You would pick up that you pulling that move, put him on his heels. And so he made this contract in everyone's favor as much as a pit fiend can. Okay. To make sure that everyone signs it. Which is basically like, cool, you used a big move. We're going to make that go away. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to go away. We're going to go our separate ways. And whatever y'all do, that's cool now. Yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, I was never here. We're good. Yeah. Bozka, uh, I need a separate contract. You see, to remember the before, before, you, before you do that, could I talk to her for a second real quick? We don't have to go anywhere. What the fuck are you doing? I can't forget this knowledge, Harold. Yes, you can. Yes, no, you can. No, I can't. Why not? Because it goes against everything I stand for. We have gone against everything we stand for ever since we got in this godforsaken city. You're gonna start now? You suddenly, it's uh, now? No, All, a lot of bad decisions have led to this point. We have to fucking eat it. That's it. There's no I more just... conversation. It, it's either Vinley's soul or not. What kind of question is that? Oh, I'm gonna forget something. Who fucking- Because I'm gonna lose mine in the process. You aren't losing your soul, all right? You can lose a part of yourself here or we can lose her forever. And let me just go ahead and say, Vinley, I'm furious with you right now. This is a fucked up situation that we all have to make right here in the moment. It's fucked. I'm sorry, Bosca. It's fucked. This is all fucked. Harold walks contract, over. The contract Dang. I'm asking for allows me to keep the knowledge but not use it. I will agree to that if you give me your soul. And here if we I are. If I violate the contract? If you use my name, your soul is mine. If you utter it in your thoughts, your soul is mine. That is the only way I will accept your terms. Harold signs. Hey. And that would go for Golor as well. <sighs> you yes. can't, you cannot, you cannot control what that thing thinks about. You cannot. Are you kidding me? Golar could tell someone else the name. Golar would if someone asked it. Would you? And that would be that entity's demise, not your own. Fair. So now we're picking and choosing who goes away forever. She touches the stone. Mm -hmm. Would this be acceptable? The knowledge is still retained. It's just forbidden, which I would imagine you have plenty of. This is acceptable. All right. I'd like to see the contract. And you see him write in a line that it almost seems like the flesh stretches. You hear the man moan and groan as a new line forms. It says, one Seisha Valispard and one Golor is allowed to retain the knowledge but never utter either mentally or physically the name, the true name of Bosca. 
upon doing so, yeah. one Seisha Valispar and go and, and or, or Golor's soul is forfeit. Realize, like, if I say to you right now, don't think about a carriage with a giraffe in it, that's the first thing you think of. And all he has to do is say his fucking name, and the first thing you'll think of is his fucking name. It's right. I I can't not think it. I can never say it, I can never write it. With purpose, as telepathy is a thing, which he says in your mind without uttering anything from his lips. Here I am having a conversation to you while thinking it, yet I say nothing. So I will say, change it to reflect this with purpose. Once again, you see in that sentence, it, the flesh begins to stretch again, almost causing these like stretch marks of scars. And you see it now say, with purpose and intent. Sasha reaches out and takes the quill and not looking at anything, just signs her name and drops the quill and turns around and walks to the back of the room. Um, I guess I'll sign it. So V also signs it. All right. What do you sign? V Emiliana Gathala. Okay. I am not playing around. <laughs> There are only two left. Well, uh, Seisha, when you signed, did you sign both your name and Golor's? Yes. Okay. There are only two left. Orkira is going to produce flame in her hand and uh, silently pray. And to the Phoenix, she'll say, I'm going to do this because Vimley's soul is way more important than that name. But I can't do this without at least letting you know. That feels wrong. Are you gonna be upset when I do this? Cause I'm gonna do it. Are you casting commune? Or are you I just really, kind of yeah. trying to get I think a feeling? She's, I think she starts by just praying and trying to get a feeling, but um, let me make sure I have the spell slot to do it. If she has to, she will cast commune. I, I will say as of right now that mm -hmm. turmoil you feel inside is the feeling you get where there are pros, there are cons. So it's, there's, underst there's understanding for yourself and that is probably as much as you get without physically communing. I just want to make sure I'm not ruining anything with you. If I make this mistake, it's mine. It has nothing to do with you. But I can't not try to save her soul. Okay. And there's a warmth in your hand. That okay, feels soothing. Thanks. Thank you. She'll stump out her hand, walk over, grab the quill, and very quickly, because she knows this is causing harm, signs her name, walks off. And then Bosca takes the quill and just holds it in your direction, boss. Inwardly, this is like a nightmare come to life. Boss steps forward, takes the quill, and then turns to Vinley. What, what did you offer? <laughs> I 
I can't tell you. I shouldn't say I can't. I won't. Was there anyone here? No. I'm going to roll insight. I will too. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, you guys have advantage because you're trying to detect a lie. Neville's not here, technically. So I don't know. Not, okay. not technically a lie. Like, okay. I'm, I'll give her that. Nine. 21. Who? She's telling the truth, Harold. It doesn't matter, by the way, if it's actually a lie or not. If you're trying to tell if someone's lying, you get advantage. Cool. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. And uh, for Voss, there's just so much emotion that she's trying to hold back. You can't read through it. I'll turn to Voss and say, she's telling the truth. I feel it in my bones. Let's just get this over with, man. I set the pen down. Did Bosca say that conversation he had with Seisha telepathically, or was it out loud and telepathically? Mo most of it was out loud. The last little bit was telepathically, but it was telepathically for everyone to hear it. Like, he he, he spoke in everyone's heads. The, the bit about yeah, this, thinking and stuff like that. When he was proving... Right, right, it makes sense. Yeah. Then I think in my head to Bosca, I'll sign if you tell me what she offered. I am s sorry, but that's not part of the deal. And I am true to my word. Always. Vossel just looks back at Harold and says, so well and truly fucked. We're fucked, but we got to. It's the only option left, man. And you know what? Realistically speaking, this should have gone much worse for us. This is easy for me and you to handle. We will never, ever deal with this guy again. Pleasant though he is. He just bows, like kind of does just a little bow to you as you say that. That's not entirely true because if he brings that sword that Voss asked for. And Voss will not know the name to say it. I sign. And with that, he hands over both contracts. Or at least holds them out. Holds them out too. Did he amend the original contract or did I get a separate contract? Amended the original. Okay, so everybody gets to remember it, just can't use it. Correct. Okay. No. No, no, no. No, no, no. no. One it's you. Balisbard. You and Golar are the uh, only ones that get to remember, but it is an right. amendment in the original oh, okay. contract. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, and you see one of the contracts looks like there's a frost that's kind of built up over it, and the other one still drips with this fetter and putrid scent. And he holds it out. I'll grab the gold one. Okay. I'll take okay. the other. Okay. Actually, no, uh, I don't. I don't. I don't touch it. Okay. Uh, Vinley, as you as you grab onto it and you hand, you feel that coldness immediately bite into you. You're gonna take eight cold damage just from from holding this contract. Uh, it's not it's not repetitive over the rounds. It's just a one time. And then he hold, he's holding out the other contract to be offering it to you. I look over to Akira, the person I trust the most to hold it. And I'm like, can, can, are you able to? I don't even know. You're hyper-religious, so I don't want to push you in an awkward state, but I will lose that. I'm assuming we're destroying it, right? I look over at Vinley. But that's the point of this, right? Is that these are now null and void and they get destroyed, right? These, yes. And I pull my half of this contract out. We need someone to hold the new contract for all of us. Oh. Oh boy. Uh, I, I mean, I don't have a magic bag to throw it in. I have uh, a haversack. I'm a keeper of knowledge. Why don't, no sense. 
I walk yeah. forward and take the contract. Okay, right. you take it? Yeah. Okay, and uh, as, as, as you take it, you watch as Bosco walks over and signs his name. And then peels the flesh from the man's back. And then with a, as he peels with a wave, you watch as it just dissipates into fire, disappearing to go wherever it is that it goes. And you watch as the contract that you have on your person disintegrates away to go into holding as well. Seisha, you are the only person who can pull that knowledge, but the physical contract itself is not there. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, Finley, you have both contracts. What are you doing? Um, I'm going to destroy them with blight. I'm going to suck any remaining life out of this piece of flesh until it is nothing but dust. You watch Vinley hold on to these and just focus as this necrotic energy begins to build up over this flesh. You begin to see it wither and decay as if exposed like a dying body over years of time in an instant as it just crumbles to ash and dust in her hands. And both contracts are destroyed by one of the signers and they are completely nullified. And uh, we don't remember the name. And as soon as Bozka signed that contract, what name? Cool. You no, know. only, I mean, there's Bozka. Yeah, and I and I know he's there. Like, it's not like a, whoa, there's a demon here now. No, it's- Oh like, yeah, no, 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 absolutely. You, you, just, name. you just don't know his true name. Yeah, you That's remember, easy you remember making a deal. You yeah. remember what you made the deal for. You just can't remember what exactly that for was. Right. No, it was a true name, but... Right, okay. Then I'll say, I think we're good here then, aren't we? Um, and not long... As you, like, as you yeah. say that, it's... You yeah. all hear the struggled sounds. And you see a hauntingly beautiful uh, succubus bound and restrained by an incandescently white and orange rope that almost, it looks almost made of molten metal. The equally almost Celestian, beautiful armored fiendish woman carries Pinchesca by a handle woven from the white hot rope and hovers with her about 10 feet in the room. In the fallen Celestial's other hand, she carries a sword and a diamond necklace surrounded with small blue sapphires that was once on the body of the succubus she has now contained. Uh, clarification, Orkira, did you cast another concentration spell to drop your uh, 10 minutes of um, detect good and evil? Probably. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I cast Bless during the- That's movies. right, you did. Okay. Yeah, so cool. it would that be gone, but yeah. Got it. Yeah. Oh, that was much faster than I anticipated. Consider your formal rank reinstated. It is much appreciated, sir. She made the grievous error in coalescing in a desperate attempt at enchanting me against you. <laughs> I have disarmed her of these as trophies for you, my lord. And she hands the sword and the diamond necklace to Bosca. Bosca will take them in his hand as he looks to Pinchesca. Do you have no honor, Pinchesca? With the constant backstabbing to your own kind, it would seem that you are a spawned of Malkenthet and not Lilith, Queen of the Sixth. You speak of honor when they murdered my Ileana. We only let people be their truest selves and feed on those who instilled chaos, ruin, and gave into their own sins. We could have been worse, far worse. Bringers of chaos like you, 
But we instilled order. Oh. She looks at all of you. Yeah, and oh, Penny, please. These mortals, I'm sure, are wise enough to know that we are bound by order and actively seek to control chaos and bind it to our laws and will. Your words fall on dead ears. You fool. You don't know what they're dealing with. There's something much stronger. Muffled. The Irene's wraps the excess of her rope around the succubus's mouth, gagging her and knocks her to his knees. Silence, Cretan. Show Lord Bazka respect. Bazka's lips curl into a devilish smile of elated pleasure before his eyes turn to gaze upon all of you. Our deal is done, but now I leave it up to you to decide this Malkanth spawns fate. What were the choices you gave this town, Pinchesca? Ah, yes. Exile or death? And you see the pit fiend look to you all expectantly. I've done enough killing. I vote exile. Exile. Anybody else? Death. Two for exile, one for death. Death. <laughs> She's an evil creature. Succubi are evil. But I'm not. Through. I'm just not. I can't just Your kill. I just can't kill somebody like that. I can't. Your choice. Everybody gets it. I warn you not to underestimate her. She has already sent an Orthon against you. She could do so again. But either way, you have helped me gain my quarry and seek my revenge. The choice is yours. I look to Akira. I don't kill people who are prisoners. I would have killed her in battle. I would have killed her to stop what she's doing to this town. I would have killed her to defend myself and my friends. But at this point, she's no longer a threat and a killer would be murder. Oh, she's still a threat. Not she in my will eyes. be again, but in this moment, if I say to kill her, that's not me defending or protecting, that's me murdering. Yeah, it just doesn't feel right. You're the deciding vote, Benley. Uh, we either have a tie. Vinley looks down at the ashes in her, like the soot of ash in her hands, then looks up at Pinchesca um, and asks, Did you truly think you were helping these people? Or was it just a grab for power? You watch as the ironies will pull the the molten rope down just, just enough for her to answer you. I was in love. And we did protect this town. I'm learning very quickly that love makes you a weak person. Kill her. And we are at a crossroads, a hmm. tie. I guess that makes me the tiebreaker. Pinchesca, you have been sentenced to death. Lieutenant, take her back to Beator and execute her on the steps of my keep. As for your help, consider this your victory. And I leave you her petty trinkets. And with that, he throws the sword and the diamond necklace at your feet, Voss. A fire portal begins to burn into the tile and wood once again as embers and hellfire erupt in a pillar around the two fiendish women. women. And another begins to form around Bosca. And I, I stop. I Wait, Bosca, wait, wait, wait. And, and it is not my say at all. I mean, I've had my vote, that's fine. But think about what you're doing here. You finally have her where she can really 
really know you have complete control. Are you really going to throw it away in an hour when you could have it for hundreds of years? She could know every day in hell that you're in control and you caught her in her own place on her own terms. You ran into the right people and through sheer just great happenstance, you caught her and now you got her. Are you really just going to throw that away now that you've got her in the place you want her? Make this me a thing. persuasion check. Sure. Decent argument. Mm-hmm. It's a fucked up argument. It's a Harold's good argument, but Sasha's hating. <laughs> Harold's not thrilled about making it, but 22. And with that, he he looks at you. Hmm. Mr. Cord, you are quite the silver tongue, and you present an argument that speaks to my soul, if you will. So be it. Exile. I look over to Pinchesca. I, I don't feel pity, but I make eye contact with her in such a way to be like, after everything you did, I just saved your ass. So okay. if you do come back, remember that. That's the look he gives her, just this sort of like, you know what I just did. Okay, got it. Go ahead and make a persuasion check with advantage. Okay. Yep. Twenty-seven. All right. Oh Noted. my God. Uh, and uh, <laughs> very well. Hold a three. Lieutenant, take her to my keep, but don't decollate her. And with that, they are <sighs> disappeared in that fiery burst. It has been a pleasure. I hope our paths never cross again, for your sake. Yeah, man, you and me both. And with those last words, you see his form dissipate from the room. Second they're out of the room, you said that bookshelf closed behind us? Yep. I don't know and... the book specifically, I'm ripping that thing off its hinges. <laughs> uh, hold on. Um... Crowbar style. <laughs> okay, and as you go close, um, you hear it because you're so close now. Or Kira yeah. and Sasha, you hear it as well. It's a, it's around here somewhere. I'm sorry. If I had the ability, I would cast light. I smack the bookcase three times and I say, "Stand back!" I say to Okira, two very hurt individuals are behind this," and uh -huh. I will, with the rest of my swole energy, pull this off. Give me, give me that athletics check. <laughs> yeah, I'll use the crowbar. Yeah, oh, so you'll have advantage. advantage. You're like yeah. the essence of swell energy in real life. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, <laughs> that is 33. Oh my, yeah. Just That's a natural 20. <laughs> oh, oh, nice. You embed the crowbar and just pry, and you hear the splintering of wood as you just rip the the locking mechanism that keeps it in place completely out of the wood itself as it swings open. And you see Morwen pointing towards uh, a sconce. Ah, there it is. <laughs> and, then, and then the elderly wizard you see, Great Azuth, what happened here? Have the whole ascenders in circles. I... Uh. I, s I see you have law flame. Tell me, is it over? Have you felled the shape changer and saved Daggerford? As you we all, have. as you all who did not see these individuals see an elderly man with long, matted, gross, white hair and a long, silver white beard, frail and thin, literally nothing but skin and bones. And he's wearing only stuff to cover, uh, like pants to cover his lower extremities, and you see a woman that in the face looks almost identical to the one you uh, knew to be Duchess Morin Daggerford. However, she has a clawed scar over her one of her eyes, and her hair from stress is no longer the beauty it once was, but has been turned white. And she too looks frail, but she's wielding a short sword. 
I can pull over and help the elderly man to a chair. Oh, thank you, dear. Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah. Let me let me see what I can do to help, and I'll I'll go over and start to examine. Give me a medicine check. I'll uh, go over and say, could I perhaps have my hole back now? Oh, yes. And he will actually, as you come up, he actually goes, ah, I believe this is yours, ma'am. Thank you. And so Orwin approaches. There's a mo- oh, okay. There was a Quiet. moment when uh, Voss <laughs> called to work here as like, come on over and, and help. And where she was like totally consumed by what had just happened and like mm. filled with just dread and horror and everything. And then there's, he calls to her and she's grateful because, oh, this is something I can do. Distraction. And rolls an 11 on her medicine check because she's not, she's still distracted. Knowing that was kind of why Voss called you over as well. May I assist her in this? Um, I 11's enough. You okay. can tell that he's not like injured as far as like hit points go, but he is exhausted. Yeah, the only thing you don't get is what level of exhaustion he is. But you can tell he is extremely malnourished yeah. and is suffering suffering from extreme exhaustion. And um, unfortunately, there's not much I can do for that right now. Yeah. Um, you do you do see that there is a like carved rune across his esophagus. Uh Vinley's going to point at that because she was about to walk away, but first she was going to say point at it and say He's cursed, and she's going to walk away. Oh, okay, yeah. I can't. I can't make you feel better immediately. Um, that's just going to take rest and time. But, and I think I can still cast remove curse. Yes, I can. I will cast remove curse. And as you lay your hands on him and kind of place it upon his neck, fire arcs up around and traces the rune a little bit at a time, almost like a match burning away at a, um, a, a black powder trail. And as it goes, it just removes it from his neck. And as it as it does, he, uh, my mistress weave. And he just gets up, grabs Orkira and kisses her on the forehead. Do you know what you just did? And he snaps his finger and light appears in front of him. I can cast again! Ah, and he like jumps up and like clicks his feet and then lands and goes, oh, oh, shouldn't have done that. Oh, oh yeah, well, you're real tired, bud. Why don't you, sit, sit, let's give this guy a seat. Let's get him a seat. You can relax, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a seat. Thanks for the kiss though. And she'll help him back into the, the chair. <laughs> yeah. He's like, oh, oh. Um, Morwen approaches you, Voss. Um, Because you said that it is done. We did. It is completed, Lady Daggerford. And I turn to the rest and say, Lady Morwen Daggerford, the real one. Hello. Daggerford is then forever in your debt. You will be awarded for your efforts and recognized as heroes. I too can write you a letter of recommendation that will hold weight with any ally of Daggerford or those within the Lord's Alliance. Down with that. And I will aid any <coughs> weave casters in my magics if I can find my spell book. Speaking of, has anyone seen my clothes? Or perhaps my focus? Uh, also, thank you again for removing this curse upon me. We can probably find that stuff. Uh, we'll get some, like, guards. I'm assuming that the town outside right now is kind of waking up from a stupor and kind of wondering what happened in the past few, however long. How Lady long? Morwen, it may be wise to address the crowd. Yeah. Or or at least let's start with um, any of the guards that might be outside the door and start explaining to people because... Very much so. There's going to be a lot of confusion and yeah. We'll assist you in this endeavor. Don't worry. It is, it is wise to address the town. Um, but maybe perhaps tomorrow in celebration of you, as an official statement in the morning. But if, yes, let us, let's get you guys settled in right now. Uh, I'm gonna just go find some people to help out and I will do a quick run around to find somebody who works there that is not a demon. <laughs> 
I like blunder into three guys yeah. with bronze skin. Like, where's our boss? No, you actually walk out and you can see that there are four guards on the outside, but they're all on the ground and kind of getting up, holding their heads. Oh boy. And I'm going to run mm. over and help them all up. Be oh. like, you guys okay? Oh. You cool? Everything good? Oh, my head. It's, 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 oh, what? What's the last thing you remember? I remember everything, but it's like... Like a filter was put over your thoughts and made you think things that you didn't really want to? Something like that. It's like, I rem... Well, hey, it's all good. I need your four help. I'm going to make y'all heroes of Daggerford. You ready to do that? Morwen Daggerford needs the help of four people she trusts. You four are the four that I think she'd need the most. Come with me, and I will <laughs> lead them. Make a persuasion right. check. Okay, yeah. So, so I was like, yeah, <laughs> feel like they're all heroes, so they'll do this instead of being like, I need to get home to my wife, which is a totally logical re reaction. Okay, we have 17. to do a, We have to do a one shot. That's these these people because he just made an adventuring party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, and and like as soon as you say Morrowind needs you, they all snap to it. Snap to. Uh, and like, there's just something behind your words that is like, you have some authority, you know exactly what you're talking about. And they're like, yes, sir, lead the right, way. Let's, let's go. And I will lead them back and I'll be like, uh, all right, so this is uh, Fred, Tim, Frank, and Steve. Uh, I, those are not their names. I have no idea. They never told me. So it's, uh, but that's what, Har that's what Harold says. Uh, okay, um, uh, while you're out, uh, Morwen looks to you, boss, and kind of <clears throat> holds her hand out and her eyes fall to uh, Laughlin. Let me lead you to your quarters, my lady. I think here is fine for now. I'm taking some rest. Do you know I... what that blade is? Go ahead. I said, do you know what that blade is? Yes, I do. And I lean in hand it to her and very quickly whisper in her ear you will offer this to me as a reward or everything here will come crashing down around you <laughs> you will tell ahead, no one <laughs> go ahead and make an intimidation check ah uh, 14 Also, how quiet is he doing that? Mm -hmm. Very quietly. I'm leaning in as I'm handing it to her. Go ahead and make a stealth check. Certain mm. people have yeah, yeah. Understood. incredible passives. <laughs> 22. I heard it. Can I assist him by just cutting her a vicious glare? Uh, sure. Cool. I'll take it. That's better. 22. Or Kira, you still hear it. Yeah, uh, I'm helping. I've forgotten the wizard's name. I'm still like looking him over and everything. And you just watch Orkira side eye Voss. Just the, the worst, like horrified, but she doesn't say anything. But I give it to her. <laughs> and I bow in deference as I separate. Um. She holds the sword, and then a hand gets put on your shoulder. It's fairly weak, and you could pull away if you so wish. I grasp it gently, but firmly in my hand. <laughs> and before she s starts to speak, there is a, a moment where sh she s stares down at you, and you can sense the fires behind her eyes as she glares down at you. I smile, and as I do, I let her see in my eyes, I will burn this entire fucking town around her to get this sword. <laughs> and she goes, how far heroes have fallen. 
I may have just given this sword to you if you would have asked nicely, because the symbol of Tempus is the burning blade over a blood-soaked shield. And Daggerford has been a resilient shield for many centuries, but its sword, she looks down at the blade, will always be its people. But sure, you will be gifted. I this. get down on one knee and put out both my hands nightly as I can to accept it. <laughs> and she see, says a little bit louder and for those with um, insights, I say above a 15 pick up, there's a little bit of grit behind her words. I see no use in keeping heirlooms from those who have decreed rule by firstborn sons instead of those willing to fight and die for its people. I give you this sword, Law Flame, and the city's alliance to those who wield it. You do me a great honor. And the second is in my hands. I will take part in the town now to see what order I can lend. Be well, my lady. And with that, I would like to leave the room. <laughs> okay. Seisha follows him. I am going to walk up to the wizard. Um, I believe I most vampires have a lair. And I remember seeing a vampire coming out of holes in a wall down where you were being kept. If I were to steal a spell book, that's where I would keep it. Just out of arm's reach, really. Perhaps ah. we should look there. Right. Uh, yes. Um, I'm just going to sit here for a moment. If you find it, just bring it to me. I think I broke my hip. Oh, here. And she reaches out. And for a second, she hesitates. And then she finishes it. And she touches him and casts Cure Wounds on him to mend that hip. Yeah, and you just hear a... Like, this just Ooh. pop <laughs> as his hip resets back into place. It wasn't broken, is just slightly dislocated. <laughs> Not as spry as I once was. Right. I'm also, going... I've been in a dungeon for many, many years. <laughs> and Harold, this is about the time you come in, and this is... This Frank. is Ted, Frank, Steve, and, and John. They're all here to uh, help you. Um, they're they're heroes. My... <laughs> <laughs> um, and I will step down to Morwen and kind of smile. And Harold has had this very negative impression of the city, but now that he sees her and she's here and it's real, uh, there is a sort of reverence about him. He's just like... I can't believe how dedicated those people are out there. It's the most unbelievable thing for somebody from Waterdeep to see everybody all on the same page in a town. Um, you see confusion kind of wash over her <clears> face. <throat> oh, I guess that's not, I guess that was probably the whole control thing. But the, the fact of the matter is you can't fake that kind of love for a city. I think when you go back out there, things are gonna get a whole lot better. And if there's anything you need while we're here, just ask for it, okay? I remember seeing my brother, Maldwin. He was possessed by a great fiend after his lover, Natissa, hired a group of adventurers to save him. He was... He did not love the people, and the people did not love him. And you can see that's why the, she had confusion over These adventures, they called themselves the Fine Fellows. The alliteration stood out to me and was easy to remember. And ensuring 
And in the ensuing combat, I tried to help out, but I felt strangely compelled to protect Natissa instead. Somehow she convinced me to hide in the old dungeon with her before she took my things and locked me away. I never saw my brother again, and I can only assume he has passed and perished, or worse. I think I was under her spell for a year as she took my form, learned my habits, my mannerisms, my faiths, and my hopes and plans for how I would run Daggerford. Once she had everything she needed from me, she released me from her control. I lunged at her that day and choked her before she raked her claws against my face. After starving me in punishment, she left her creature feed on me as a means to receive my meals. I held out as long as I could, but I am a hard hammer of tempest and I refused to waste away in my cell. That's for the I benefit think, of everybody. Thanks to you. But I stayed strong enough so I could die fighting if ever given the chance. But that day is done. And she gives you a nod. Harold will nod back in deep respect. He will say to her, if, and I don't want, I know that there's a lot going on right now and you need to rest, but if you, want to know the answer about your brother this group here has the means to get that answer for you at least a yes or a no I am a broken blade but I still keep this town strong I can keep this town, town strong if they love Daggerford if she did anything that I would have done and if there was an ounce of true dedication, as you say, then we can become strong. And they will be the sword and the shield. When the right tools and patience, these broken pieces can be reforged into the hardened steel stronger than before. But you know, the part of the sword people forget to be very important a lot of times is the hilt. And the reason I say this is because it's with the hilt that you have a, a form of control. You're able to push the sword, strong, clean strikes or smooth, short ones. You're gonna be that strong hilt to that beautiful sword. They need you right now. There's a lot of confusion in those streets. People don't know what happened for the last year. You may be one of, you too, may be one of the only two that really understand what's happened. So my only, and I don't have to give you advice. I know you know what you're doing. I hear what you're saying and say to myself, wow, I wish I could leave like that. But the fact is you're going to have to be that strong hilt for them. And how strong that hilt is, is how useful that blade will be. And she puts a, a hand on your shoulder. Spoken like a follower of Tempest. <laughs> I, I just happened? have a necklace. <laughs> What happened to my town? How are my people? Well, uh, d there's a cat man, but that's that's a little, that's down the road. We'll get to the cat man. I but believe they prefer to be called tabaxi. No, 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 no. This is a cat man. And I'll, I, I got to know the answers. I'm not leaving the city until I find out. But until we get to the <laughs> cat man, um, uh, the people are, when it came to things that seemed normal, like, oh, we're all going to go to a Daggerford like trial or, oh, welcome to our inn. Things were fine and normal. And it was very hard to tell anything was wrong. As soon as anything pointed in the direction of Morwen, the fake Morwen or mother, um, boy, things changed real quickly and became very strange. People seemed um, willing to just ignore. Who is this mother? Uh, I think her name was Ileana. She what was role a. role did she play? Uh, that's the fuck. That's the fucked up part. Pardon my French. Um, she is. Uh, she was in charge of the orphanage. She was a vampire that was in love with uh, the fake ah, Norman. So that was the name of that creature that fed upon us. She's not going to be doing a whole lot of feeding anymore. Again, thanks to you. 
However, I will need someone to take over the orphanage. Do you know anyone willing or qualified? Um, I, yeah, I don't know about qualified, but I know someone who really likes making toys. You'd probably be really excited. He's a good guy. Wanna, yeah, you might want to look at him. We'll give you all the information. Yeah, his name is Bill Verse. He just came into town. Um, he came into town with us. I to was to at, help the kids. Yeah, he was going to open up a toy shop. So. Well, he may be more busy building toys for those he watches over. Thank you for this information. Um, and I will be happy to meet him in the coming days. For now, it's important that both of you rest. And it's probably important we rest too. We have a lot of talking to do and it's not going to be the most fun talks because most of serious talks with adventurers tend to go. But um, it yes, really there is... does seem to be some troubled upon you. Yeah, and it's not, it's not hard to rest. A door where you did not see Voss leave because you were out and about, but you noticed that Voss is kind of missing right now. So is Seisha. Seisha was oh, and so is Seisha. Yep. He looks around and he goes, yeah, we're um, growing pains. You know how it is. Uh, but everybody can get through anything if they stay strong. I think you know that better than anybody. Did you lose anyone in battle? Almost. Uh, <laughs> you could say that, uh, but we didn't, thankfully. Uh, things are just complicated. It's tough being an adventurer, right? It's not like the books, but uh, I still wouldn't want to be doing it with anybody else than these books right here. And the two folks that are currently missing, who I also love. I can't go back to what? Wearing pants and playing music in bars? I can't do that anymore. Look at me. I'm here. It's awesome. Okay. Um, anyway. There is much to be said for those that inspire hope and joy in times of turmoil. Uh, well, yes, I would say so. Uh, thank you. And he will look to the others and say, do we want to give them time to kind of and so we can have time so that we can um so, uh, i have something i need to see too uh i would prefer it if oh none of you came with me it's a dungeon of torture so a subject right now it's that that seems like the exact opposite place to go nothing's there nothing's there it's empty now we let the two people inside out and killed the creature ruling over it. I just need to look for a book. Alrighty. But we all have to have a talk after. You, you know what? Is it cool if I stay with you? Of course. Then I will stay with you. I'm I not going to offer rooms in the castle for you to stay tonight, if you so need. I think... I think we kind of like our room. It's okay. Um, <laughs> I am not offended. I was merely suggesting in case you wanted to save some money. Okay, yeah. Uh, also, it's probably a really good idea um, to tell your guards to kind of search through the entire castle, make sure there's not any uh, surprises left behind by a succubus and oh. a vampire and others, so maybe we shouldn't stay. That's a good point. Uh, in the cisterns under the... The castle, by the way, you have to get those checked because it was very easy to break into your castle. Um, there are four creatures. I didn't get a good look. They might have been mind controlled or they could be vampire spawn. Just be prepared for that. Good to know. The, the four guards that Harold brought in, look. Your la ladyship, uh, we'll gather a team and we'll go investigate. That's, that's the Steve I know. Be careful, we do not want, if they are, spawn for any more of our, our town to fall. Understood. Yes, if they were spawn, oh, I thought you were talking to me. Apologies. Goodbye. <laughs> I will follow uh, wherever you're going. And you see uh, the two of them kind of 
break away and go and gather, and you hear a, more than two sets of footsteps as they as more you know kind of meet up. Still looking a little groggy, but continue down. Harold, before he follows out of Bentley, is just going to give a look to Orkira and uh, to uh, V, and it's kind of a look of just being lost. Like, he's looking to two of his best friends for, like, what do I fucking do now? And bef before they can really say anything, he just turns and walks with Vinley. Alright. So it is Vinley and Harold And walk. Cujo and Fluffy. Yes. <laughs> and, and your two Whittlings walk down the stairs. Orkira and V, you were left standing with the elderly wizard, Delphin, and Morrowind. Orkira spends a moment, like, finishing up giving just, uh, hey, so drink water really slowly. Um, get yourself something really bland. It's going to be a while. Don't don't try to eat a lot. Um, you know, the, yeah, you, you can probably have the guards bring you stuff. I'd help out more, but I'm kind of... Uh, tired so but um just just be careful and uh we're staying in oh the uh, v what's the name of the tavern we were staying in the something luck lady, lady luck, luck? Lucky lady. yeah 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 uh we're staying Gosh. there so you can come uh get us if you need oh, and... did i really remember the name of something right you yeah. did wow <laughs> <laughs> i really am out of it <laughs> <laughs> i mean we're all we're all kind of out of it so um, um, Morrowin? Oh. Yes. How um, can I be of service? When you're, I guess, feeling better, um... I'm feeling fine. Oh. You can tell. <laughs> it's... It, no, no, no. It's a mask. <laughs> like, she is a leader. It is... She is definitely weak. So, continue. Um, I'd really like to, um help out in the town if I can. So I guess if um, there's any specific areas that need to be a little more um, funded, let me know. You've already done so much. I know. You've but I could do more. it from darkness. You've brought it back to the light. I just know how hard it can be to jumpstart things without money. Oh, I almost forgot. Uh, Harold's gonna jog back to V and I'm gonna whisper in her ear. Um, oh, by the way, we gotta tell her about Horton Miller, that guy who died. Oh yeah. Yeah, just let her know, could you do that? Yeah, uh, so Horton Miller, um, He's actually someone I tried to help, and then uh, he he died. Um, he got killed by the vampires. By vampires and the weird water trench body stack situation. Um, I had actually given him a thousand gold to restart his life, and I feel really that he didn't really get to. Let me rest. And if you can find my scriptures, I can aid in bringing him back. Wow. Really? You can you can do that even though he got turned into a vampire? It simply will make it harder, but not impossible. If you have a diamond worth a thousand gold, I can ask Tempest to fight to retrieve the soul and for Lathander to light the way. With a little luck from Timora, they will breathe life again. <laughs> but it will have to wait till tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. For sure. Uh, the diamond's worth a thousand gold? Yes. Well, My brother right. once had one. He wore it so proudly around his neck. Who's your brother? He, he was the former Duke, Maldwin. Oh, I'm sorry. 
we'll, we'll see what we can do to help find a diamond. And then I would love to learn that because I, I can, I can do the same thing, but I can't do that if they've been undead. So if you know how to do that and get around that, that'd be amazing to learn. It's resurrection. The higher form of divine magics gifted oh. from our gods. <laughs> um, still working on that one. Yeah. I am assured that once your god gifts you such abilities, you will bring life back to the world very often. Um, trying. Yeah, but um, uh, we can we can work on getting you a diamond. Yeah, the the uh, V. Do you remember the name of the the wife that we gave the body to? That you gave the body to? Because she's has the body, so. We'll get Seisha that would know it. Seisha know. Yeah. Uh. Well, well. You know what? That's that's a, that's a tomorrow problem. Like we'll, Gwen. We'll do that tomorrow. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Um. I wasn't there. I don't know. Uh, v, I will remind you because you were there when it happened. The body was taken to the temple of Lathander. It was taken to the temple. Yeah. So the wife oh. doesn't have it. We we escorted the wife to the temple with the body. How many days ago? Yesterday. Oh. Then if I can have the diamond by today, and we stop them before dawn's light, which is when they will be cremating bodies. Oh, right, they burn them. I must have a body. Otherwise, it would be beyond so my magic. Where should I go look for this diamond? I will search did and have she, mine. Hmm? Did she you see that it. I like picked up all that stuff? Uh, she saw Law Flame. She did not see, unless you were like brand No, I mean V. Yet. Oh, uh, yeah, you would all know that there was a diamond necklace. You don't know its worth. It was a diamond necklace that um, Pinchesca was wearing around her neck. Is it like any kind of diamond? It's like a very specific diamond? It's gotta be as worth it. As long as it is worth a thousand gold. It did what about a collection of diamonds? No, not for this specific spell. Yeah, okay. Do uh, you even have that? Well, if you yeah, have did... one from... Uh -huh. I, I, no. All the stuff that we uh, that I have is all 500 because I don't have access to resurrection yet. Um, Did Voss take that necklace too, or did you just take Lawflame? He did. Because um, it's just stuff handed to me. I wouldn't have known if... I certainly wouldn't have known that this operation was happening. Well, I guess we could take that necklace to a jeweler, 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 mm -hmm. and assess the cost of the bigger diamond. You know what? That's a question I've had to talk to my god about many times. Um, let's just uh, the, we'll work on that after we get a whole bunch of diamonds. Uh, going to the temple to stop the burning of the body. Let's do that. That seems like a really concrete. Very easy thing to, to do right now. I like yeah. this plan. Do you want to come with me and do that? And we'll do that. I okay. Like that. Okay. All right. Let's do and that. and yeah, awkwardly, the... York here is going to like bow and try to leave because she's just been upset and frazzled this whole time. And this is like a path. Like, here's a, a thing I can do. So yeah, and <laughs> as Orkira is is leaving, you hear Delphin, like, kind of as Morwen goes over and to sit next to him while they wait for Vinley and Harold to come back. You hear Delphin go, You know, it has been 80 years since I last spoke to a gold dragon. And <laughs> as, as you hear as you're going down the stairs. <laughs> I'm not gonna, he's tired, I'm not gonna, it's fine, <laughs> fine, he's been through a lot, it doesn't matter. It doesn't Do I really okay. want to give the senile man a spell book back? I mean, I mean, <laughs> well, you can't it. Fair, she looks like she a gold dragonborn yeah. with wings and a tail. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, a dragon mistook me for another dragon, so. That's yeah. fair. As we're walking yep. out, I'll, I'll, I'll look over at uh, V and say, Thanks for coming with me. I, I needed something to do after all that. Yeah, no, I understand. It's really easy mm. to feel directionless after stuff like that happens. I, I usually have direction. It's usually a lot of healing, but I'm... Yeah. My direction tends to be uh, whatever tomorrow is. Uh, 
it's a, I don't know what tomorrow is. We just got to get there. But let's let's go um, take care of this body, and then we'll go find the others. Okay. Okay. And then I guess we'll tell them about the diamond thing, and then I guess we'll ask about that and go to a jeweler and all that later. Yeah, yeah. We've got a bit more time with the diamond than with the body, it sounds like, so. True. I really want to learn that spell. That'd be really nice. I would have felt a lot better the other day about everything. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. And as y'all continue on, we're going to cut over to Vinley and Harold as you venture down into the darkness. Harold, you see fine as your eyes glow purple. It opens up into a large, unlit, rectangular chamber that you're seeing for the first time, Harold. The shadows feel darker here. There is an unsettling sound that makes you feel like this, uh, like that even though the bat swarms have left Finley, there's still that feeling that there's just this presence here that just feels unnerving. But as you all instantly kind of feel that heart racing and beat like a thunderous drum trying to break free from your chest as you are consumed with dread. As you look up, you no longer see the hordes of chittering bats. However, a few still remain. And as you look around, you see old, rutted, and seemingly unused torture implements left over from a begone error. Two of the four iron doors can be seen forcefully ripped from their hinges that are bent and broken from the sto stone they were embedded in. Well, this place has got a cozy vibe. And then we'll head down the stairs. Um, I will send uh, Cujo and Fluffy to use the portable hole to collect a couple bat corpses that are okay. laying on the ground. And then I'm just going to Savard and I, or perhaps Harold, mm. could you assist me? I'm, I know it's this wall. There has to be a way to open it. Sure. Right. And I'm going to try and look for a way to open the wall or if why there's are a you, hole. Why are you collecting the bats? You're becoming a mobile funeral home. What is this? I am getting tired of looking at uh, one of my familiars. I need a new one. Damn, cold. Okay, and if, <laughs> if you are helping, uh, you can make an investigation check with uh, advantage. Don't you feel anything for this skeletal hyena? <laughs> Jerry? <laughs> 22. Check out my new Kinko named Jerry. <laughs> 22. Uh, all right. Stop it. With a 22, you move the table aside <laughs> and you pull the sconce on the wall as the wall swivels from the center and slowly opens, revealing a small, dark room. Um, Harold, something you noticed as Vinley was trying to find the mechanism to open, you notice holes bored out underneath the, uh, into the wall underneath the table, completely hidden in shadow once the table was moved. Ah, I will grab her attention and point to the holes and be like, I, I, that might be a trap. I don't know, I'm not a trap guy, but it smells like one. Or maybe this is poop. That's probably um, guano. That's quite a, bit of it here um these are reliefs for a mist creature to enter and depart through without anyone being able to follow them well they still had to go through guano to do it so you know what who's really winning in that situation um i'm really sorry about what i said back there it was a shitty situation but um i don't think there's ever an appropriate reason to yell at your friends and so i'm sorry about that there was, I could have gone about it a better way. I was frazzled, I was upset, and I'm sorry. I am pretty furious with you, but you're one of my best friends, and it's, I don't think it's anything we can't work through. So, you know, we live and we learn, and I'm sorry. Oh, um, I appreciate that. You have no reason to be sorry, though. I... I am the one who should be sorry. I drug you all into an accidental slip of me being greedy. So for that, that I am sorry. That didn't bother me as much. 
I think it was the moment you said, regardless of what we did, you were going to sign for all of us. That was where it crossed the line for me. Because I understand making mistakes, but then to say glibly, well, I don't care what it does to you, I want out of the mistake I made. That's not as cool. I understand that as well, but I was trying to fix a mistake with another. I I think that that's kind of just being a person and that's okay. Look, we we scraped by by the skin of our teeth. I have a lot of apologizing to do to Seisha. This is the second time I think in my entire life I've ever yelled at her and I feel awful about it. But I think that what you did was short-sighted, especially for an elf. But if anything, just let this serve as a warning for you in the future, you know? It's like, look at what all we did. This seemed impossible to us when we got here. And now we look around and we're all muddier and unhappy and, and going through a lot, but we got through it. Despite all of our personal stuff getting in the way of the adventuring stuff, which I'm learning is really the hard part of adventuring isn't the adventuring, it's how it affects you after. All right. I bring that up to ask you, how are you doing, Finley? Hmm. That was a very simple question. That has a very complex answer. For now, momentarily, I am okay. Um, I'm not going to tell you the deal I was going to make because I don't want to burden you with that knowledge. I don't want to know it. I'm sure it was something you did in desperation, something you felt like you had no choice to do. And that's what I'm going to tell myself for the rest of time, regardless of how you feel. And so you felt desperate. You did something desperate. Thank goodness, whatever that was, didn't happen. <laughs> desperate. I like that. Works, right? More than you know. And then she's going to pull a sconce and try and move the wall. You're muted. And the wall opens. And you see it is filled with a collection of objects and books stacked on a few bookshelves between some lounge couches and a desk along the far wall under a another torchless sconce. In one far corner, you see a large wooden trunk chest, and in the opposite corner stands a dress for a whole... Uh, a dress form. Dress form. Holding a very resplendent pale green silk wedding gown under a finished and well-crafted dark corseted armor ceremonial piece whose edges and ornate designs are inlaid with tarnished gold. It's not the best quality you've ever seen, but it is still quite regal. However, what commands your attention is the centerpiece, which is a large stone coffin covered in an ornately carved Gothic embellishments. Centered at the top is a carved stone skull with hollow deep eyes that look like empty voids. I very slowed to look at Vinley. Uh, Vinley actually looks excruciatingly sad, even though I'm smiling. I, I, I'm i very greedy out of play. I like nice things. Vinley's very sad looking at this item. Why are you upset? Oh, um, mm. I didn't believe her when she said she truly loved that creature. Love's weird like that. So even evil things can find love. Yeah, are you kidding me? Anybody can find love. I did. Wonder. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Um, can I hey. expect to take a step up and start expecting just the room in general and especially the dress, like circle around the room looking for things and then come to the dress and like get my hands on it and kind of Cool. Yeah, no problem. Uh, Harold, are you helping or you? Just yeah, like... yeah, absolutely. Oh, cool. yeah. Go ahead and make another investigation check with advantage. Oh, it was almost a natural twenty, but it's an eighteen. 
You can see. Yeah. Um, you move around to the room. Uh, there is a desk. On the desk is a makeup kit and a set of keys on an iron ring. The disguise kit's makeup looks heavily used in the skin tones as well as stark gold and black's mother used for her fierce look. They're um, looking over the dress. You instantly recognized it as the finished work that the blacksmith was working on. And the gown looks very well made and it seems to have not been worn yet. <laughs> The and there is the large chest, and then the coffin itself. Oh. Um, also with yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's everything. Uh, uh, the I... the books on the bookshelves are just pretty mundane. They're just they're stories. There's a lot of like fiction and other things that you notice a pattern where everything and every story that you've heard of, you haven't heard of all of them, but the few that you have heard of, and Harold, you've heard of a lot more of these, all have to deal with a matronly story. Well, she knew what she liked. Um, Controlling people and reading books about herself. Fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> and there doesn't appear to be a journal, like a personal diary, even in the desk. All right. Well, I will uh, have. I will. Uh, I yeah. almost said chuckles. Um, Fluffy and Cujo. I'm gonna have Fluffy and Cujo start putting the books into the portable hole. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go over to the chest and open it. Well, actually, uh, I'll check it for traps first. Can I do that? Yes. Make an investigation check. Okay. You're checking it is the same way normal people check for locks. You just jiggle the handle. Yeah, basically. I got a 12, so that's what I do. I shake it a little. It doesn't fine. appear to be locked. I, I mean, it doesn't appear to be trapped, but it is locked. Okay, uh, can I try to... Do I have stuff to tick locks? Let me see. I have so many kits, but I don't think I have a lock Thief picking tools? kit. I do, not, I do not have thieves. Well, let me check. Hold on. I might not. Have, I might just be... Let me just look. Thief? I could no, just break... I do not. We could just break the box. I don't want to... Break the box. It's a nice box. Maybe it's her box. Maybe it's a sentimental box. We don't know anything about this box. I can get it open. Just watch me. What do I have to roll with disadvantage? <laughs> um, okay, so you can use an object that is small enough, uh, and it would be thieves' tools, or in this case, <laughs> a uh, deck space roll at disadvantage, <laughs> because you are not. You know, it would be half your proficiency since you're a bard. Yeah. So. Uh, is is there like a letter opener on the desk? There's not, but there is a set of keys. <laughs> you see Harold like looking through his shit to find something to pick this lock with? Just wait a minute, wait a minute. I got like, it. You, you, like, you, you go, you pick up the keys, looking for the letter opener, you put the keys down. Nope. I don't, there's no implements small enough to fit into the lock. Just take all the keys and start smashing them into the lock all at once. <laughs> I will. I will look around, and after Harold fails for like two full minutes, it's like I I fail too for two full minutes. There's I, just no hope. I guess we can't get it open. He'll lean back on the desk, and his elbow will hit the keys, and he'll be like, "Those, what? those are the keys to the locks, huh? That I'm leaning on right now. That we literally picked up and picked up that quill to try to break the. Give me that. I'm gonna take the keys and try them one at a time. Okay. Um, the first one does not work. I will move right on to the next. The second one does not work. Mm -hmm. we, we gotta keep on rolling. Third time's the charm, really. And That's with it. those words, you hear a as the lock opens. And I will fling it open excitedly and get gassed. No, I'm kidding. It's just uh, a mimic. <laughs> da 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 da. <laughs> when they were keeping its mouth shut. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you are locked in. Arr, arr. No. <laughs> it's me, Biblio. <laughs> It's been me the whole time. No. <laughs> I've been every uh, object. It was Biblio years. all along. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you open this, you see actually a myriad of uh, items. It wasn't a small chest. This was like a, a bed end chest. Uh, you first see a red leather bound book stamped with 
a flaming sword inside of a shield crest filled with battle tactics and scriptures with the first page reading, I think Tempest and Tempest thinks me. I put that in my coat. I know who that belongs to. Yeah. There is a blue leather bound spell book. Oh, I take it. Yep. And as I quickly... soon as you, as soon as you pick it up, and tr and try to just like open it up to see, you see an ethereal arcane lock appear, holding it closed as a series of vibrant blue circular sigils towel tower and rotate in the faintest of light. In draconic, which I believe you read, right? I do. Name, you see the name Yellow Knife. That's it. My book opened because it liked me. <laughs> the next thing you find is a curved talon bladed dagger made of gold etched with arcane script. I think this should go to V. There is a leather pouch that looks like one of V's. Oh. Oh. I, I open it up. It is full of dragons, full of gold. About Man, a thousand. Be. About a thousand? Sweet. Yep, about a thousand. I actually oh, think... no, it is. Oh, I this actually... is V's bag of gold. I... I actually think that should go to Voss. What? No. Uh, <laughs> which is funny that you say that because the next le dark leather snap pouch you find looks like one of Voss's. I... Yep. And Take there's it. a couple hundred gold in there. What is going on? <laughs> that one, I believe, is for... We got philanthropists on the team! What is happening? Surprise oh my god! As well. I thought I was the only one that gave money to people all the time. They're all giving money to people all the time. No wonder Voss is upset. Even Voss is giving money to people all the time. When did you give money to someone? I give money to people all the time. What the fuck difference does it make? It's money. <laughs> Do you know what a ph philanthropist <laughs> is? I, I, I was guessing at the definition. <laughs> And I hope I'm right. And he's going to take the gold and set it aside so he can return it. Okay. Um, there's roughly a little more than 200 in that one. Just at a quick glance. Uh, the next thing you find is um, extremely lavish blue, silver, and red robed vestments. There is various other bags filled with a variety of coins from all across the Sword Coast and some from even further away. Rough total, just at a quick glance, is roughly two to maybe 300 gold. Oh, easy. Uh, there is a few rings and jewelry pieces. Mm. Again, from all across the, uh, the coast and some from other places. And a rough total... Yeah, give us an intelligence check if you want. Sure, to. absolutely. Yeah, you do that. I'll I'll try. We'll, we'll... <laughs> Thirteen. Seventeen. I'm not the brightest. <laughs> it's um, a dumb stat. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'd say Harold, you'd know that it's at least worth more than five hundred gold, and uh, Vinley, you would know it's closer to the thousand gold mark as a collection, collection. like the like mm -hmm. together the various pieces of jewelry. Probably oh, worth like over these are 20. Worthless. Um, but but They're there's worthless. a lot. Yeah. They're worthless. worth like 20 gold. He looks at you immediately after he starts that joke. And when you say it's worthless, he just glares at you. Motherfucker. What? I know it's worth something. Are you kidding me? I used to it's... steal for the rose. I know how much this is worth. This it's... has got to be at least a. Uh... No, Harold, it's gold plated. Look, there's a seam right there. Okay. Are you kidding me? I'm the king of gold plated. Look at my <laughs> outfit. Did you ever see my hair pieces? Did you ever see my gold spray paint? No? Well, there you go. What is and, uh, win this. Let him win I, this. He will. <laughs> uh, I need you both to roll me D100s. Oh. Okay. <gasps> Yay, I think I know what this is. Oh. 94. 68. One off of being a really good number. Six Almost nine. Nine. Um, Vinley, <laughs> you pull out nice. what looks to be a one inch cube that each side is painted a different color. I love one inch cubes. And Harold, you oh pull God. out a glass jar of what, what appears to be containing lard. And across it, it says Griffin grease. <laughs> oh, I'm keeping the Griffin grease. Are you kidding me? I really, Harold turns to Vidley and you can see he's really trying hard not to laugh. And he's like, this, this mm -hmm. is the greatest treasure. I have ever received. Do you know what this is? 
I, I, I'm not sure. It Me looks... either, and it's going right in the bag. And I put it in. <laughs> I love it. I have yeah. a cue. Uh, go ahead and roll uh, D100s again. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, my God. I just want to roll D100s the rest of my life. <laughs> Is it one cube that you can twist apart into tinier, tinier cubes? Is it a Rubik's cube? Did you just get a toy? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got... Burn it with fire! I got a three. I got a 16. Ooh, other end of the spectrum this time. <laughs> uh, I love this table so right. much. <laughs> you pull... Vinley, you pull out a card... And it's a tarot card, a, a divination card, and it looks like you. Ooh. Oh, they must have visited Waterdeep. Is it purple? What? Is what purple? Is the tarot card purple? It is. Look, this is from that weird guy in the Dark Ward. Whoa! They have a very Whoa. tall reach. Maybe oh one of the Xenophar people were carrying this on them and they got killed. Whoa. Now I have two. Congratulations! Is it a different card than what I originally had? Uh, no, it's the exact same. Exact same. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. Uh, and Harold, you find kind of fallen in the bottom is a gold coin, and as you pull it off, you don't like immediately recognize the mint on it. Like it doesn't. This one, Avens? What is this? I was thinking the same thing. It actually had me very concerned. Um, actually, roll an intelligence check with disadvantage, Harold, because you might be trying to recall something. That's fair. Oh, no. Remember, Harold, remember. Uh, does a four remember? <laughs> <laughs> it looks sort of familiar, but you can't recall what from. Yep. Why, why are you looking looks, at a... It looks familiar to me. Like, I, like, I've seen it somewhere before. Well, it's gold. Well, yeah... I got the spray paint. We've established that. Do you I still this? don't. Yeah, just give me. <laughs> and... No. Do I recognize it? No, you yeah, absolutely, absolutely do not. It just looks like fake currency. It's probably gold-plated. Perfect. <laughs> I'll take it, and I'll put it in my collection of things. You know what? I have plans for this, and I'm going to put it away, and I've got little plans for that later. All right, excellent. Uh, and that's everything that's in the chest. Oh. Okay, so we got vestments. Uh, I say we take all of the stuff, and we bring it by Morwen and say, hey, how much of this is important to you? And Well, she already said she doesn't care about heirlooms. Yeah, I wasn't here for that. So oh. if she said that, great. But I would rather hear it from her myself. That's a fair point. You're a very uh, nice person. I try to be. Uh, let's. Why don't we? Me too. He's going. Hey, you do a better job than you think. I'm going to open up the jar of Griffin grease and kind of take a sniff. Is it awful? It. It smells like grease. I was gonna put some of this in my hair. I'm not gonna do that anymore. <laughs> he closes it back up. That smells awful. That smells awful. <laughs> this grease was harvested from a griffin's ass. And frankly, it was a raw ass. It was a raw ass butt, and they just scooped it on out. It's it up. I don't know. What does a vampire need with griffin grease? Why is it, like, written on here in messy script? Look at her handwriting. This She didn't write that. Right. Anyway. Whose is that? Probably <laughs> It's mine. It's whose it is. <laughs> I am the proud owner of the only jar of Griffin Grease in the entire world. And I thank God that it's me because it could have been somebody else. Which and that one? would have broken my heart. The climax of your arc is the Harlequin with another jar of Griffin Grease. <laughs> <laughs> You're about just greasing up the floors real hard. Yeah, uh, it's a grease off. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> no! no! Yeah, and both of them angrily. Yeah, 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 he wipes the grease and. Yeah. <laughs> Does the smile across the mouth? Man. This is the smelliest fight ever. Oh. <laughs> They're like slipping all over Everybody's each other. Everybody's just sliding, sliding everywhere. <laughs> yeah, they don't want um, to get hit. <laughs> to, well, yeah, to give you to give you a, a definition of the what the smell is like. If you've ever smell, if you've ever been to an aviarium where oh, it was no. less tended to than it should be, that <laughs> no. 
<laughs> Bowel smell. Oh, no. will. Ha, ha, ha. I've got a whole jar of that now. <laughs> yep. Um, um, all right. Do you head back upstairs? <laughs> yes. No, I take happen. the wedding dress. Okay. okay. I will take the wedding dress and the dress form that it sits on. Okay. And the ceremonial armor? Absolutely. I'm I'm just commanding uh, no. Kujo and Fluffy and Kujo. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. We'll walk it into the hole. I have sure. a lot of stuff for people Coffin. when we get back. Coffin. Oh, oh. Thank you. Imaginary voice that is just Savard. Um, I'm going to inspect the coffin. Okay. It is it is a stone coffin, just so you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it is not built into the flooring, but is heavy AF. Um, but with your, what is your passive uh, perception again? I think it's 16. My passive perception is 18 and my passive investigation is 19. Got it. Wow. That a lot. Um, as you look <laughs> over, it just looks very embellished with goth- gothic embroidery, like carved into the stone and that the, where a head would sit underneath, there is a skull like halfway pushed up. And the eye sockets look deep and dark, and with your dark vision, you look down. They just to be look to be hollow holes into uh, nothing. Mm, let's see. Mm, just in case, I'm going to cast uh, a fourth level magic missile to just completely destroy the lid. It does not go off. Magic missile only hits creatures. Oh, oh, sorry. Yep, so you yeah Fair. you go to you go to cast it and nothing happens you don't don't expand the spell slot. It's been a long day. Guiding bolt. It doesn't say a creature. Oh, it does go. say a creature. Toward oh. a creature of your choice. Yep. Daryl, do you have any destructive power currently? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, yeah. Just uh, destroy on, the me... lid of that coffin. Yeah. No worries. Uh, <clears throat> Cujo, fluffy in the hole. Uh. No, no, wait, what are you talking about? Tell them to lift each side. It's not open. It, it, there are holes in the lids for her, and then she'll... It, put... With your passive, it, it looks like it can open. I don't want to rationalize the fact that my skeletons can't lift stone, and we are the two weakest people in the party. <laughs> okay, fair. 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 Harold is uh, going to uh, kind of consider for a second... Let me see if this works the way I think it does, because I will be so happy if it does. It's the first time I've ever used it. Oh. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, I cast Levitate on the lid. <laughs> and you nice. do, and it lifts up. And as you successfully lift the coffin lid... For traps. Oh, that it? seems to have been closed for a very long time. But inside is nothing more than an empty cavity of a stone rectangular box. Harold will reach into his time. bag. And even though she was an evil bitch, and she literally deserved everything that happened to her, you know, there was some love going on. And Harold, as a final show of what passes for respect for a bitch like this, he will take a rose from his pouch and he will drop it in and be like, I don't need it anymore. It's now yours. Ooh, that's good. And as and as it falls and you watch where it hits, you see carved into the side on the inside for Eliana, my one true love. Oh, that's the proper spelling. And she writes Eliana's <laughs> name into the book of her dead. Nice. And Harold will levitate the lid shut and yep. be like, just, uh, you know, it's kind of like... Uh, Showing the future of the rose. Oh, how about uh-huh. it? Uh, uh, I love it. Thought, uh, and uh, as you head upstairs, um, are you laying everything out for Delphin and Morwen? Everything will, that belongs to them. Yeah, it, it, like. And, well, what what do you lay out then? If you're not uh, doing everything and you're laying out what belongs to them, what do you lay out? The rings. I will. I will lay out everything. The vestments. I hand her her book, uh, but I'll, we'll get to that. I'll hand her that once she's gone over everything. But we'll, we'll, I will lay out everything. If I don't see something that I feel like should have been let out, then I will be like, I will look to you expectantly being like, where is so-and-so? But I'm specifically the leaving. Wedding. I won't mention the wedding dress or the armor because I know that's not hers. I'm leaving those and the books. 
That's fine. Well, the, the mundane game. books. Yeah, the yes. mundane books. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Of course. That's totally. fine. Then everything so, else. The red leather bound book is Morrowind's. I will hand it directly to her. The blue leather bound book is Delphin. And he also grabs the dagger as that is his arcane focus. Perfect. Oh. Good for him. Good for me. And you, <laughs> you see the name as you're holding it. The arcane script still, still says yellow knife. Oh. And there's a gold, a pure golden dagger. Oh my oh. god, I could have looked at all of his spells. <laughs> Uh. Uh, and and the vestments, and he's like, "Oh, my clothes!" As he puts <laughs> on his his vestments once again. Um, I would say them. you would see that when you hand him the book, um, Harold. If you ever touch the book, it has the arcane lock on it. It goes when away. You hand him the book; it does not glow that way. Yep. And he'll open it. Um. And uh, he will offer to teach you any spell within his book. And I will send uh, you that list. And as you all, you kind of contain this, that is the only thing that they take. Everything else, the the gold and, and the tri- trinkets and all that, the, the rings, they do not. They don't cool. take well, and they don't recognize. Yeah. Cool. Okay. We will 100% take them. Um, yep. If they're, I will even ask them, hey, you cool with us taking it then? And if they're like, yep. And then it's like, cool. Sweet. Thank you. <laughs> uh, and as... We shift over to Voss and Seisha. We're going to take a break. Uh, So we know we went a little bit over uh, the halfway mark, but we wanted to get through that scene. Um, Thank you for bearing with us uh, for uh, an extended first half. Uh, We will be back in about 20 minutes. If you have not done so already, please enter hashtag beyond and hashtag Eldritch into the chat to enter yourself to win our raffle. Please make sure you only enter once. We'll see you in a couple minutes. And we're back. That was a pretty intense first half. It, it was. There was a lot of dealing, a lot of wheeling, yeah. a lot of woeing. A lot of screaming. It's a... <laughs> yeah. Whole lot of in. Mm. Mm. But we pick back up with Voss and Seisha. As she begins to follow, uh-huh. I pull out the diamond necklace and I hand it to her. I'm sure you can make a lot more use of this than I can. And use it to bring people back? Definitely you can use it. Make more use of it than I can. What's up? I assume you're not following just to keep me company. I just wanted to get out of there. <laughs> that I understand. I'm sorry you had to violate your principles today. I genuinely am. I know that was, that's a lot and you're not the only one. It. The knowledge is still there. Uh, Seisha. Yes. As Voss hands you this diamond necklace, Mm -hmm. your passive perception of close to a bajillion or Kira being a bajillion. Yeah, yeah. uh, (laughs) <laughs> uh, you can like you immediately see that kind of along the edge of the gold chain that kind of holds it in place. You see arcane like scripture, draconic runes like etched very very tiny all across this diamond. Can I read what the runes say? It's it is magical arcane. Okay, script. I'm gonna identify it. Okay. Uh, she kind of you... stops mid sentence. Oh. Something up. This is magical. Oh, Where wait. Did, whose is this? Was Pancheska's. Oh. So, it, as you take a second and you. Oh, wait. Identify it. The magics make themselves known to you, and the wear of this amulet once attuned is under the effects of a Nistal's magic aura and non-detection. That's how she did it. This this allows you to mask your aura and prevents you from being detected. Detected how? 
Well, like magic. When I tried to see if she was a fiend and she appeared perfectly normal because of this. Or why Bosca couldn't locate her? And it hid Bosca, or it hid her from Bosca. That is something one of us will no doubt need in the future. Yeah. Good to keep around. Yeah. I suppose you wouldn't so. mind accompanying me. I need to send a package off. That? Mm-hmm. Who's it for? Jarlaxel. Though I won't be sending it directly to him. All right. I'm sorry you ask- had to sign a contract. <sighs> this all boils down to being stupid and doing that seance. Yeah. I really can't... <laughs> I can't say one way or the other. It does. None of this would have happened if we hadn't cast that seance and inadvertently summoned him. True. I think when we get the group together, we're all going to have a little talk about certain things, but I don't think this is an... This has been an enlightening event. And it certainly has been eye-opening in many ways, I think, for all of us. And I think, I, seeing you look down, I kind of put a hand on your shoulder and meet you in the eye. I think it's time we started looking a little deeper into you. What do you mean? We know we're going up against some sort of abomination with ties to this thing that keeps speaking to you. Uh, yeah. One way or another, we are going to have to confront it. I think it would be better, on the road away from the city, we try to see if we can't get a handle on this darkness inside of you. Did you hear her war try to warn him? I did. None of us knows what this means specifically. But, the way I see it, we can let it sit inside of you and run from it, or we can confront it on our terms, on our time, and maybe do something about it then. It's getting worse. Um, I imagine so. When, when we fought the man that transformed in the town square, There was a second there I didn't want to kill him. What did you want to do? I felt like like he was one of you. I didn't need to protect him, but I didn't want to strike him down there was some sort of moment of kinship. There's always that philosophical dichotomy in all of us, but yours is much more realistic, physical. But I think it can can be affronted all the same. Best to do that while we still have Okira with us as well. And best so that you aren't living with this constant look of fear in your face as to when you're going to turn on us. that obvious, huh? Of course. But here's the thing, Serge. I think after the events of today, it is time to start lifting the veils we have over ourselves and confronting the pieces of ourselves perhaps we don't necessarily like. Because at the end of the day, if the most horrid of horrid things happen, If it happens on our terms, at least we can deal with it then. And you want to know, before you confront whatever is in that mountain, that you can face whatever is in yourself first. And we'll be there to help you. Okay. 
This has been a difficult day. We've all had to make heavy compromises to ourselves. Hopefully this forges us more in iron rather than breaks us. Believe me, I'm not comfortable with what's happened either. But there's fuck all I can do now. Boss. Hmm. Before you send that off, can I see it? Certainly. I think it would be a good idea to know exactly what we're giving him. Fair enough. And I'm going to take the sword and cast Identify on that. Doing like a walk and identify here, so we're yeah. adding like, I don't know, a little wild to our trip. No, 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 that makes oh, no. it, uh, she's My identify is instant. Yeah. Oh, is hers instantaneous? It's, it's a minute, it's not... I'm sorry, it's a minute, so she's doing it yeah. as she's walking. She's so this is like, a yeah, voodoo this is like... blood ritual like other people in our party? No, no, she just kind of runs <laughs> yeah. her hand over it, and a golden light trails behind her fingers. And oh, that's so easy. And the recesses of the the sword and all the curves and sort of swirls around in it and it flows down her other hand that's holding it and flows up into her neck and kind of vanishes into her face. So... No blood necessary. <laughs> but clarification, that is because Vinley casts it at, at a ritual that does yeah. not expend a spell slot. Yep. So, there we go. Well, it's so weird. Yeah. So, as, as you kind of take a second, you run it over and the knowledge of the magics across this ornate hilt that is this silvery metal that kind of arcs up almost like flames with a singular red gem in the center of the cross guard. And as you unsheath it from its leather sheath, you can see that there are blue runes that go up the blade. And as the magics of the Identify rush into you, you know that this is an item of legendary rarity. Oh. Named Law Flame. It is a plus one flame tongue longsword. You can speak magical words to cause it to light a blaze, which will give uh, an abundance of light while also doing fire damage. However, the greatest reason why this is such a prized sword beyond that of a typical flame tongue long sword is that it grants the wielder several different powers once per day the wielder become can become aware of good or evil beings sense magical energies and gain the sight of location within one mile of its location uh. I assume it's excellent, otherwise Jarlaxa wouldn't want it. It is very much so. This is quite a weapon. And Seisha fills him in on all the details. Boss Seisha, takes also, it all in. I was going to say, Seisha, you also remember with keen mind that uh, Morwen said, any that hold this blade has Daggerford's allyship. Huh. That's why he wants it. If you have this blade in your possession, Daggerford is your ally. All these things are grand. As much as it might help us on our journey, we have a greater chance of losing it there than we do through the mail system. Well, she did bestow it on you, Voss, and say she yes. hands it back to him. That she did. That she did. So were you ever going to tell us that you were tasked to retrieve the sword? I was afraid you'd all want to keep it, in all honesty. I'm sorry I kept that from you, but... It's a sword. It's a tool. Mm -hmm. But there is, for all the boon he's going to gain from this... Jarlaxle is an important ally to us, particularly now. I get 
No, actually, I don't. I don't get why he felt you couldn't tell us, even if... But Jarlaxel I... keeps his secrets, and Jarlaxel does not trust me, and I don't trust him. We are playing an odd game with him that I don't particularly grasp the full ring of. Harold insists he's trustworthy. I don't believe so. But Harold's also his go-to, not me. Well, from the stories, I think if you get his word, he stands by it. Someone's word is only as good as the man who carries it. And his reputation is not as pristine as, say, Renair's. Right. So, I'm sending this to someone for safekeeping so that when I'm back in the city, I can meet him on equal footing. Dabble? The Doom Raiders. Smart. But in any case, I want to get this out of my hands now before Morwen decides to change her mind. Yeah, I didn't get the impression she was real keen about that. No, but she understands we did a grand thing. And she understands that needs to be rewarded. And she understands that you would probably bring the city down to ashes. Wasn't that the threat? A woman like that needs more than kind words and a helping hand to get the fire back in her eyes. She needs someone to fight and someone to hate, too. It doesn't have to be you every time, boss. Maybe not, but... Why not? And I'll head off to the post office. Seisha will just quietly follow. Okay. Um, as you, and eventually as uh, V and Orkira, and I assume also as Harold and Finley, step outside the castle, you will all see instantly and notice small cascading pillars of radiant light from the sun piercing down through the clouds that look to be dispersing. It's a strange feeling as you finally realize that there seemed to be a perpetual storm of dark pewter clouds completely blanketing the entire surrounding area of Daggerford after days of caravan caravanning under a cloudless sky. However, that feeling is followed by the sense of accomplishment, emboldened by hope, as light once again shines down on Daggerford. As you walk around, you see everyone, and we mean everyone walking around as a massively heavy weight that they don't quite understand has been lifted off their shoulders. You see many of them hugging each other as if seeing a long lost friend. Many of them apologizing for strange acts they remember doing, but not why. You see tears of joy and sadness. Your insight picks up that although they are now unburdened by the oppression they were under, they still carry small motes of shame although they seem resilient in no, no longer letting their dark desires become actions. And as you make your way down... Um, to... Real quick, as okay. Seisha's saying all that, she's going to grab Boss by the shoulder, wait <clears throat> near, and lead him down an alley, and she pulls the blanket that she's been using out of her, uh, her uh, haversack thing and wraps the sword in it. Fair all enough. Right. This is a symbol to the city. Fair enough. I think I would have, like, shoved it in my coat and walked around like a man selling watches. Well, eventually we're going to have to turn it over to the shipper. And Fair enough. better to do it wrapped. Hmm. Uh -huh. Do you have quill and paper? Always. Stupid question, I suppose. I need to write a letter as well. Do you want a paper bird or a regular sheet of paper? I'm at the post office, so I might as well send it that way. Okay. She'll as they're walking, pull stuff out. Mm. We'll wrap um, it up. I was going to say, as you make your way down the Ducal Way, which is the road that leads back into the town from the castle, and I would say that the first alleyway you pull Voss aside from is the one that's kind of nearby the uh, orphanage and the Temple of Shantea. And 
Seisha, you notice with your extremely well passive, uh, there's a couple of new green leaves and flowers blooming from the dead branches on the Shantea Temple. There's not many, but just a few. Isn't that pretty? Look, life's coming back. How about that? <laughs> and you make your way to the post office? Nature is healing. Yes. It's, okay, just so everybody knows what we're laughing about. <laughs> Miss Gala Nodell being snarky typed in the Zoom chat. I cast Blight just to- <laughs> <laughs> Not today. <laughs> Not today, nature. <laughs> you keep that pollen to yourself. <laughs> All right, anyways. Make your way to the post office. Easy enough. And um, uh, you see a middle-aged gentleman um, kind of working behind. Uh, okay. And you can see, like, just kind of, like, chipper and upbeat and kind of just welcomes you as you enter in. My good man, I have something that needs expedient delivery to Waterdeep. How much is that going to cost me? Oh, water deep. Yes, yes. Uh, we can do that. Um, uh, we are uh, backed by the Lord Alliance guarantee that our packages arrive on time and safely. Uh, Lord Alliance guards will be along any of our carts and carriages moving forward, so don't you mind that whatever it is you need expediently there will be there safe and sound. You have reassured every atom of my soul. Thank you. Um, uh, how big is the um, item that you need to be shipped? place the blanket wrapped. Ah, there. see. And a, 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 a blanket. Yes. <laughs> and he'll go to pick it up and fold it and realize that it's not just a blanket. <laughs> I place a hand on the blanket and I say, it's a blanket, friend. How much to ship this blanket? And I yeah. lean in just a little bit as if to say, shut up. Uh, he sees in a um, kind of uh, looks over to a scaled weight and he kind of shrugs because he doesn't know what to say yet. <laughs> <laughs> but he gets your meaning and he's yeah. not fighting it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he'll kind of take it and set it on that and it'll <laughs> immediately <laughs> it'll start adding weights to it. It's uh, a heavy blanket for a very deep sleeping friend of mine. <laughs> He does not seem to question anything, um, and uh, tells you how much it is. Ah, uh, yes. Um, expedient as fast as we can. Uh, that is going to be a rush fee, um, and uh, just to make sure, uh, I'd say a seventy-five gold will get you there. I pay without question. Okay. I do have a question then. Yeah. Because if I remember correctly, you gave all of your yep, gold. They got money. From I have a hundred gold. Right. Yep. That's right. Yep. Uh, and uh, as uh, from Morrowind. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yep. Uh, and he's like, oh, excellent. Uh, and uh, kind of holds out a, a card for you to fill out of where it's being delivered in. I also have a letter going to the same area. Would you mind uh, wrapping this together as a bulk discount, please? Of course. Uh, but the letter will be thrown in for with the 75. Thank you very much. I will send you the contents of the letter as well as who it's addressed to. Great. Sounds good. And I'm going to look over his shoulder and read the letter when he writes it. I will. Do I notice she's doing this? Make a stealth check, Seisha. <laughs> Versus your passive perception. Okay. That's Plus. fair. So this would be regular, not a disadvantage, right? Because uh, I'm just looking. You you're not. You're in your armor. I'm in. Uh, yeah, your armor but, still makes so noise. If trying it to does see. because you're trying to like lean and be cautious, <laughs> so it <laughs> still makes that <laughs> that creaking noise. Yeah. We both LARP. We know how hard it is to sneak in that. Oh, shit. oh! What is up? Sixteen. I rolled a natty twenty and a seventeen. Ooh. My passive perception is a sixteen. Damn it! Oh, <laughs> <jealous. Wait. laughs> Hold on. What is what is your uh, your stealth bonus? Negative one. 
Oh. It was a 17. I rolled a 17. Oh, okay, got it. Got yeah, it. Yeah, point. Got made it. it down to a 16. Yeah, and so, yeah, you... How cruel the gods are. Yep. Yeah, right? <laughs> you peer over, and you start to read the first one, and as you do, you're... I just you're want to pul- see who it's to. That's, that's all I want. Okay, um... I would to give credit to the fact that she never rolls well on stuff. I, I will give that yeah. information up. It's to follow. Oh, okay. And then and then you, you your pauldron shifts as you lean a little too far over and it just clink. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Must you? Boss, how long have you known me? A long time, but still. Curious. Still, I'm curious. I'm not gonna read the rest. I just want to know who I was to. <sighs> I'm sending something off to follow. It's a good choice. All right. I'm uh, a little worried wait. about them. In all what? honesty. Why? <sighs> Nasty business with the Harlequin. I pull her to the side when we say this. I don't know why. He attacked Orso, or sent goons to do so. But I feel like he may be looking for weaknesses in our own groups. Fala is not a warrior like the rest of the Doom Raiders are. Proficient, yes, but I worry. I'm, I'm sorry, the Harlequin attacked someone? I've told you this before. Oh, you have? The Harlequin okay, hired forgot. goons to attack Orso. Um, I don't know what the plan is, but I am worried, and I want to keep everyone on their guard. Okay. I don't know what else to say. In all honesty, part of the reason I pulled Davil aside was I asked to be second in command of the Doom Raiders in case anything happened to him. It's a good choice. Thank you, but what you I need to start taking an active role in the lives of these members if I'm to become a leader worth following. And they, I feel they are too kind at times. That can get you in a lot of trouble. Yes, it can. But I will pull the letter up. I'll turn around and look at some postcards as he (laughs) writes his letter. I will use my body to block it this time. <laughs> yeah, you finish the letter, uh, you close it, you stick it together, and uh, it is, uh, you know, uh, pulls out some paper, some uh, uh, like butcher stock paper, wraps it, wraps it in twine, uh, you and know. And then puts it into a, a small wooden crate box that's about the same size. Yep. Hammers that, sh- that shut with nails uh, and uh, puts the where it's going in water deep. And uh, says, uh, uh, it will go out at uh, first light. Thank you very much, my good man. I hope this eases the sleep of my compatriots. I know I'm going to sleep well tonight, so I hope it does for, for your compatriot as well. And at that, I'll say, if you wouldn't mind, no. I denied them this previously. We'll meet up with the rest of the group. And... If you wouldn't mind, before we leave, heading to the orphanage. Yeah. I'm curious to see it. I think me and Arkira are the only ones who haven't been there. Who else has been there? Well, Venley went with you. Yes. Harold went and apparently upset things. And V and you went that evening. Harold may be more perceptive than I gave him credit for them. Are he was you right. Seriously, not aware of how perceptive Harold is. He wears the face of a clown too well sometimes. Oh, Vast, he is anything but a clown. He is one of the most perceptive people I know. I think if he had to choose a profession, a singing clown, mind you but something that goes around making other people happy. Tell me. He wouldn't jump at the opportunity to travel around in a tent in a circus somewhere. 
I think, I think he's where he needs to be. I agree. And I think he has a lot of untapped potential, I think. Yeah. Same way with Vio Miliana. Same way with you. Mm. Well, we'll see. Well, I'm hoping so. <laughs> if you've peaked now, wow. <laughs> Not to make it weird, I've missed you. I'm here. I'm more here now than I think I've ever been in many ways. You're in, you're a lot more like the boss than you back home. I always was. You had a little struggle there for a while. Certainly. Well, let's meet back with the rest of the group. Yeah. Or it gets okay. too weird. Uh, you make your way back to the tavern, and uh, we'll jump. Are you stopping by the orphanage first? No, it's getting. Um, I'd say what, I'll go there first, and then but wait for the rest of the group to come there because I don't want to deny them that because I know Okira has been dying. <laughs> uh, if you stop by, the, you're stopping by the orphanage. Yeah. Okay. Uh, to expedite things as you go in. Uh, Seisha, for the first time you enter, there is still a dark presence that feels foreboding about this. The shadows seem darker. The long hallways just feel like you're staring down the gullet of a creature. And then you see a couple of kids run past, and they seem kind of absentmindedly not immune, but just, I guess, maybe even just used to that feeling. So it doesn't affect them anymore. But that presence is still there. And there's no one in the office. Um, there's a couple of people if you talk to. Uh, they mentioned that Mother t typically steps in later in the day and has other sure. things to tend to during the morning. Yeah, but sure. that just dread feeling, that weight of just emptiness just pushes on your shoulders as you step foot in this place. You do find a um, custodial person passed out on the floor. Yep. Ooh. I'll rush over yeah. and try to wake them. And they wake and Are you okay? Oh. Oh. Oh my head. Oh. Where? Where am I? You're at the orphanage in Daggerford. I yeah. tap her on the shoulder, Mace, and like, let me check the rest of the compound real quick. All right. And I'll head to the office. Okay. Um, uh, how did I get here? The Duchess will explain tomorrow. There's Duchess. been some events. Where am I? Daggerford. Daggerford? Mm -hmm. Where are you from? Cormier. Wow. You've traveled quite a ways. I was... I was passing th through. Everything's gonna be... It? Um, it's, what is it, Flame it, 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 You give the date. I give him the date. Yeah. And you kind of see him, like, stare off. Um, everything's going to be okay. I'm missing two months of my life. But you have your life back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, he, he says... That was two months ago. What are you talking about? So he says that the date you give was two yeah. months ago. What year is it? It's what year is it? 1492. It's 1492. And he says, I'm missing two years of my life. I'm so sorry. There. 
okay. Um, Your passive perception, you can see kind of around the edges of his mouth, dried blood. Okay, divine sense. Does not ping as undead, and okay. your passive perception does not pick up any elongated canines. Okay. But what you do pick up is that the entire building that you're standing in is unhallowed ground. It's gonna be okay. Uh, you're gonna be able to to go home soon. Do you have money to travel? <laughs> Pat Pat says, "Nope." How much? He, how much gold would I estimate it would cost to get there from here? Mm, that all depends on like, is he traveling with a group? Is he traveling guarded? Is Traveling by caravan. Yeah, yeah cara just to give you, you an idea of where Cormir is. Yeah, it's roughly the almost the other side of the continent. Yeah, yeah. So it is months travel. Oof. Okay. Um, it's it's not much, but it's a little bit to get you started, and she'll give him twenty five gold. Okay. I mean, he just, he, he takes it just like, almost like just absentmindedly, not even really paying attention, just holds yeah. it, doesn't even put it in a pocket or anything, and just kind of just sits on one of the benches and just kind of... Just take it easy. And that's... Um, I'm going to go check on my friend, okay? Doesn't. He just yeah. nods, but again, just kind of the she's, shock of... She's going to put her, as she, as she turns and starts to walk, she just kind of reaches over and puts her hand on her sword and begins looking for boss. Okay, uh, you make your way down, kind of seeing where he went, uh, and boss, you make your way to the office. Is it unlocked? Uh, it is not. I mean, I it, it is not unlocked, yeah, sorry. Oh, it's locked? It is locked, yes. Okay, I'm still swole. Uh, how long does that last? <laughs> Hour. Hour? Mm -hmm. I would say you're at the very tail end of it, but yeah. This can be my last action then. Post open the door. <laughs> All right. Go ahead and make an athletics check. Crowbar, as is my one true desire. Yep. I mean, hey, mundane items have their uses. Crowbar and a grappling hook. That's all boss needs. 23, because I'm adding oh, plus yeah. five to that roll. Easily shoulder check it. The door flies open almost off the hinges. I don't even check what's inside it. Where's the book? Is it here? Uh... Do you you pull the yep. the book? It slides open, and there is a locked safe. Shit! Can I do the same? <laughs> uh, sure. This will be hard, though. That's fine. Swollen must don't fail me now. Uh, that's a pretty swole roll. Uh, it's thirty. <laughs> <laughs> You grip it and begin to pull, and the, like, stone around the, like, outside that it's kind of bolted into begins to tear as you rip and bend the iron door open and completely off. And as you do, it, you hold it as your body begins to deflate. And that iron door, which wasn't so heavy, gets real heavy and <laughs> kind of... <laughs> Drop it immediately as yeah. soon as my feeling a little bit smaller than I do is the book there. The only thing in that safe is a old leather bound book with an iron ring kind of embedded into the front of it. I take it. I turn to where Barbara Roy's name is. Okay. It's the I tear very... it out of the book and shove it in my coat. Alright. It is the very last entry from two years ago. And you have the list of 12 names that are just above it mm -hmm. and the three names with Barbara Roy's. But I take that and wait okay uh Seisha, eventually you find a busted in door and you see a bookshelf move to the side and Voss just kind of leaned up against the desk and there's a safe door that has been ripped from the walls you see stone cracked and um 
I'm unsure of where you put the book, but you also see a leather book near Voss. And then there's also um, a small glass of what looks to be wine, empty glass, uh, wine glass on the table. I walk over and smell it. That's not wine, is it? It's not. not. Set it back but, down. Apologies, I thought I'd cut out the middleman for once. I rarely get to be this strong. No, it's it's fine, boss. This is a very bad place. This this ground, this this building is evil. Huh. There's there's magics here that make it more habitable to Was it not a bar like that originally? Well, there might be more undead here. Then that's a problem we need to solve. I know she's probably going to tell me I told you so. But that's fine. Who? We do need to get this place consecrated, is that the word? Yes. Hmm. And that's what we'll do. And we are right across from the church and the street, assuming an actual priest or cleric lives there, which is suspect at this point. <laughs> well, we've got an Orkira with us. Yeah, we do. And a I'll wait here for a moment if you want to gather the rest of the group. Sure. Um, maybe clean up a little bit. Well, why? Okay. I just figured you might want to avoid questions. Sasha turns around and heads out, and I'm going to go. Uh, Boss just for... says, Bear did this. Sure. Sure. That's a good cover. Makes a good story. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go track down the group. Okay. Um, you, um, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, we're going to switch over to Orkira and V. Because you're making your way down the Duke Hallway. And before, right before you get to the town proper, there's a that round uh, temple with the uh, dulled golden uh, dome. And you remember to be the Temple of Lathander. Uh, you know, every time I come here, people want to argue with me about things. I think we can just try to get this body and get out of here quickly yeah no i'll uh i'll explain that um i'll just explain i guess okay all right i'll back you up because i don't know if they believe anything i say anymore uh you walk in and you see the uh elderly high priest um tending to uh, the body of horton miller kind of getting it ready for it's he's wrapped it in like ceremonial cloth um, and has begun the process of uh, getting it ready with, you know, incense and other things. Hi. As you enter, uh, I was going to say, you look up and you see an, an oculus opening in the top of the dome where there seems to be a pillar of light pouring in that you did not notice the day before, and it all seems to wash over this area in the center, and you look down and there's this resplendent, like, yellow... Uh, tile laid into marble that looks to be like a radiant sun gilded in edging of gold. Oh, cool. And, yeah. <sighs> um, hi! Um, uh, so there's going to change... Hmm? He'll turn around. Good day! Lathander has blessed us! The rays of sun are upon us again! What can I do for you? And then he sees you. Ah, it's you! Hello! Lathander has blessed us! And, and he just, like... And then, and then, and then you continue, V. Hi. Yes. Yeah, so there's been a there's been a there's been a change of plans. Um, it turns out we can totes bring this guy back normal, so we're not gonna burn his body. You have the means to to restore this man to life. Well, not me, but like Morwen. The Duchess is like gonna help us with it, so. Uh, she she has to blessings say of Lathander, and, and just say, it just continues. Of course, I I'm glad you you stopped me. We but mere hours away from. I know, I know, and and, and and here's the thing. 
here's the thing. She can do this tomorrow morning. We just got to bring him there. And if something happens and it doesn't work, we'll just, we'll give him back. You bring the Duchess here. I guess. I'll I will make sure that here. he is ready to receive resurrection. The Duchess is a devout of Lathander and will bless this temple. Yes. Yes. Okay. Can I, I'm going to insight check yeah, him. Make an insight check. Make sure he's telling the truth. And I see you, Lauren. You seem a little confused. She is I, Tempest, but she you also know and you have learned that she also follows Lathander. Okay. All right. That's Ten. That was l- literally my thought process. I'm like, I love Ted really does much. But who does she like more? Um, probably the one that uh, blesses those that are in battle. Yeah. The but one that her book is. A 10. Uh, it's enough to get very genuine, okay. very sincere. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Do- okay. All right. Uh, excellent. Cool. That that saves a, a trip, kind of technically. I wasn't really sure we were going to store him. So this is a better option. Uh, and even more, like, from seeing him the day before when he was just like, Yep, this is what we are. This is it. We can't give you water. We can't accept this. To now, like, the sun is shining and that weight has been lifted off of his shoulders as he is jovial and happy. Almost filled completely with hope, seeing light once again. Okay. Um, and thank as... You. Ah, of course, thank you. Ah. Blessings of Lathander, thank you. May the light shine your path ahead of you. Thank you so much. Are you sure that you, you, uh, that's not Paylor? I do not know a Paylor. You know what? Never mind. I shouldn't have tried. Thank you. Bye. And she's going to walk away. Yeah. See you tomorrow. And we will see, say that now, Seisha, you see leaving the temple of Lathander or Kira in V. Yep. Well, that's good. At least we don't have to be carrying a body. I was kind of concerned about that. Yeah, I, you know, it's really difficult to be discreet. You just can't be. Yeah. Hey, hey. Oh, hi. Hey. Hi. Um, where are the others? I don't know, but Morwen is going to bring back Guy. What's his name? Horton. 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 Yeah, apparently she can she can cast some pretty beefy resurrection magic. We just got to figure out. Uh, we got to find a, a thousand diamond. gold diamond. Yeah. But she's got the be. power to do it, so we just, yeah. Huh. Should be easy enough. We just got to get a diamond by tomorrow morning. Well, we have to get a diamond within... I've got a, several. Well, are they? Are any of them worth a thousand gold? No, they're worth 300, I believe. Uh, see, I asked if we could do a collection of diamonds, and she said, no, it has to be um, one whole one. Yeah. Well, we might have one that would work. It would destroy a very powerful magic artifact. The necklace. Yep. Well, if- one magical artifact for a man's life. Like, can you put a price on a man's life? I guess a magical artifact would be the price on the man's yeah, life. Can. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, can. there's there's always a price. Yeah. You can um, always check for jewelers in town too. Roughly a thousand yeah. gold. What? What, what is the- <laughs> so roughly a thousand gold? That's what it was worth to the vampires. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, remember, I'd say remember it's about. Earlier, when I was talking about having a discussion with my God about like the specifics about um, these kind of things, that's one of the reasons that I like being able to do this without the diamonds, because what happens when you have a 300 gold piece diamond, but then you get it at a discount for 250 gold, is that enough in order to bring them back from the dead? Like if it, it's well, the yeah, retail it's, value. It's the actual value of the gem. But if you only pay 250 gold for a 300, usually 300 gold piece diamond, what's the- Well, if you, you get don't a think deal the on that it. Much. I don't know. The phoenix got really pissed off when I asked, oh. and so I stopped asking. Oh, my preserve me. Um, we need if to find the others. We need to find And the it's others. about this time that Harold and Vinley, you see the three of them having this weird discussion. You see, like, there's perplexed faces and uh, just, you know, confusion, a little bit of anger uh, and, and stuff of, of your three friends. Everything cool? Are we having an argument? The, uh, there you in. are. No, we need to go to the orphanage. Like, mm-hmm. now. Well, why? What's why, why the orphanage? Now? I mean, um, are we, are we, the we orphanage is on hollowed ground. And she Whoa. says that very quietly. It's Whoa. on what? Now, uh, here it begins to growl. 
Cursed like, land. The loudly Who would growl. build an orphanage on that? Or um, make eye contact with a vampire oh, would yeah. would desecrate it and or, make it. Or Kira, maybe you shouldn't growl while we head to see. To let's see the let's, children. let's walk and talk. Voss is there waiting for us. I know you're a very sweet, awesome woman, but kids might be a little scared of the growling dragon. We're just we're gonna take care of it. We are the ones who take care of this. Knowing knowing a couple of the children, they'll probably think you're the most entertaining thing in the world. While they're gone, I would like to sack the room for anything valuable. Just throwing that out there. (laughs) I was waiting for that. Uh, as, uh, uh, there doesn't appear to be anything of value here. Fair enough. You don't find your, your bag of gold. You don't find a bag of a thousand gold. You don't find anything. It seems like you open the desks and the drawer. Even the desk is like almost completely empty. Like it just has maybe a spare ink and some spare parchment and that's it. Oof. Um. Hey, um, who's good at appraising? I... Uh, I sometimes know what things are worth. It's sort of like a coin flip. Is jeweler in one town? Of you, one of you, as, as we get inside and we're off the street, can one of you tell me how much this diamond is worth? Oh, uh, yeah. At, inside off the street, as in into the orphanage? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you step in, you feel that oppressive... Dread. I, I I rolled for Harold's sake a performance check to try to uh, not be reacting to this, and I rolled a natural one, which gave me a four. So nice. um, she's still growling, and if she like had vibrating, be, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and she's still hurt from before, so she's like walks in and just stops, and you watch as her, her the claws on her feet dig into the wood. Kira, are you okay? No, Finley. Do you have the spell magic? I, I I do. Do you have? Okay. I don't have the energy to do the other things. I need you to dispel this. Easy now. peasy. I've never used this spell before, but I'm happy to go now. Yeah. Yeah. I would attempt it. And I'd love to see you happier after I do that. So I'm going to go ahead and cast it at third level. And All right. I need you to roll a d20 and add your charisma modifier. Oh, uh, this should be pretty good. High. No, that's a seven. What? You I rolled a two. You Ouch. pull out uh, the... Are you casting it through your, from your accordion? Uh, Probably. Or is it just a... Uh, is it from your accordion? Or it is, is it not an accordion yours? thing. It's one of mine. Okay, got it. Yeah. So, yeah. So, using your accordion as your spell focus, you kind of begin to play as the magic washes over the ground and nothing changes. Actually, my focus is the mask. So I'm, oh, got I'm, it, yeah, got I'm it, got just it. holding the mask. Yeah, I'll, the mask, I'll, right. I'll try it another time. I'll give it another go. Can I do that? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I'll sure. burn another slot. He's like, oh, wow, this is tough. Uh, no worries. First time I ever used it, it was uh, do-overs, do-overs. It happens to everyone, Harold. <clears throat> His power fold is really strong. That's why I told that first girl I dated, but that was a lie. Uh, 17. Girl. And with that, you kind of... Steal yourself for just a moment as you take the mask and almost kind of not putting it on, but putting it up to your face and blowing out from the mouth of the mask as this purple energy washes out of it and over the ground. And you watch as it begins to coalesce around the entire building, slowly moving through as these purple sparkles begin to cover everything you see some of the children coming out and like start like trying to play with them uh as uh, can i can i be... give a can i give a kind of a cool description of what absolutely happened? Oh, yeah. yeah as it's all covered around there harold kind of like takes the mask and puts it back in his shoulder and lifts a hand and it all just kind of back up into his hand and he just crushes the orb of energy and and it sends of course it sends sparkling purple stuff around the kids. Yeah, not a shockwave. No, I don't. Everybody's on their ass. No, uh, just kind of like glittery purple. You saw, you saw as you were pulling it into your hand, it was almost like pulling the shadows themselves towards you as more light seems to pour in from the windows. And that, uh, that oppression on your shoulders is lifted. And Voss, even in the 
office, you feel that weight as lifted from you as all of a sudden you feel your breathing get normal. And you didn't even realize that you it was like harder to breathe in this building, but you feel a little bit lighter on your step uh, as the dispel magic is successful. Kira walks over to Harold <sighs> and just hugs him. He will hug her back and smile <sighs> and he looks relieved as well. This way, guys. Um, All right, let's go. During that dispel magic, uh, when the smoke was getting too close to Vinley, she was keeping the thing she was looking at away from it. She was like, no. And I got a 19, <laughs> I got a 19 on my appraisal check. <laughs> a 19. Um, the, and as you're looking at it, you can see the arcane scripture around the diamond. And you can tell that this is definitely an enchanted item, but that diamond is worth a thousand gold. Uh, um, this we join the rest of the group at this point. Okay. This will do for what we need it for. You would have can to we, break the item. Can we find another way to do this? Because this artifact may be useful to us down the line. If have we already there identified was it? another way to do it, I think that would have been suggested by we, now. No, I mean, we like, can replace the focus stone like we did with my shield. Can we? It's worth a try. What? What? What does it? My shield works again. Wait, it, you're this... saying you saying using the diamond for that instead of bringing this guy back to life? No, use the diamond to bring him back and find another thousand gold diamond to replace it with. And I don't mind if that'll work. The... It worked for my shield. I mean, why not? Right. I turn to the rest of the magic users in the group and to get their opinions as well. That sounds as viable to me as any other thing with magic. <sighs> Theoretically. Somebody can make an Arcana check, or... please, because I'll I let, can't. I'll let people who are better at it. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to take away to. their. Well, I want, I want them to. You have talked their a big moment. game. You talked I, a big game, man. I, I always talk a big game. That's Harold. Yeah. <laughs> this is all on you, Venley. I got a twenty-one. I got a good okay. to say good. for that. There you go. Twenty-one. You know it is possible. However, you can't just find a diamond and place it in. There are intricate arcane. Uh, runes that are etched into the diamond and you would have to get someone to enchant it in order to put it in but it wouldn't cost as much and everything so it's ex essentially exactly what was done to the shield okay uh, what does the necklace even do right have we identified it, it yet? yes yes it it oh. masks the aura and um hides from sight well not we sight, are but we are going to a mountain that has a strange deity carved into it. This might be very useful for us in the future of that. Especially for you. And she looks at between Seisha and V. It could be useful for either of you. I'm okay. This might be something to... It won't disguise her appearance. Right, no, I mean... I mean, I have at least 10 friends who can look at me whenever they want through magic. Who's to say um, whatever's looking at you, Seisha, isn't capable of that? And who's to say your father isn't? I wonder if it could hide for me, it could, it could hide me from... That was my thought immediately. Right. I don't... I don't like the idea of leaving this man to die, but I've this could keep us from dying in the future. I think that. Wait, do we? Do we dis determine? Why don't we go to jewelers? Wait, and wait, maybe wait, point? guys! Shouldn't we like talk to his wife? Mm -mm. She's going to say bring him uh, back. I think that. Well, yeah. I think we should wait until tomorrow to talk to his wife. She is enough that she's coming down from now, and that's going to be overwhelming. My feelings are, did, did you guys determine whether or not replacing it would work? Oh, yes. In theory. Theoretically, then, yes. then why not just use it now, and we'll get another one at the next big city we come to. They there is no the next big city before yeah, we get to the mountains. This is the biggest is. city between it's, here and the mountains. So we'll go in a mine. We don't need why it Why don't now. we look in jeweler shops in Yeah, town? yeah, I agree. Let's this, take a moment. Though. We can look in jeweler shops. I, I'm fine with that. This orphanage is nice, though. Now it's it nice. Now. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot less scary than the last time I was here. Oh, shit. Uh, uh, not that I was here. You are, you've already been outed. You can guess by who. 
friends over at Seisha. <laughs> okay, it's I'm fine, gone. Harold. I know you were here with good intentions, and you were right. Somebody was messing with you, man. I don't like that. What? I understand. Yeah, I got a deep feeling in my gut that somebody was messing with Voss because for a guy who handles pretty much all of our major crises and seems really, really, you know, proactive, he suddenly seemed very passive, which was very strange for him. And considering the guy is like when I'm, you know, you guys are all like my closest friends. I just thought, well, something's not right here. I'm going to go see it myself. Um, so that night I said that I was going off to, to go take a walk. I, I, I did take a walk. I just took a walk in there. Um, and I, uh, well, I talked shit. It's okay. I talked a lot of shit. Um, mostly because I had the feeling something was off and I wanted to confirm it for myself before we sent in an army in the middle of the night to the orphanage. Uh, and that was, that is what I did. I'm sorry. I just realized something. What? Oh! No one... You remember the legends? Yes, of the Catman! Yes, do you have a lead? We are we can't leave the city until we know. Well, now we'll never him. know, but really? Yes, you might. Really, really, really? It's yes, Voss! Voss is the Catman! What? He's the Catman! No. The guard was saying that the cat. It was man... a clever ruse perpetuated by Viomiliana in an hour of need. And so the legend oh. of a cat man, a man acting as a cat, was born. Oh my to... god! And he did it, and he did it. He acted like a cat. He acted like a oh cat. Oh my god, you are the cat man! I, I am am the, the cat, cat man. man. And I'm so sad now that the whole town will never remember the legend of the cat man. Oh, they'll remember the legend of the cat man. You think they will? I, I've, um, ta I've talked to people in the town, and it, they remember everything that happened. It's just they think it's all weird. Um, the custodian that I talked to lost two years of his life. Whoa. Hmm. So maybe they won't remember the cat man. No, I think uh, it sounds to me like because all the guards remembered everything. My assumption <laughs> and is. And all the townspeople you talked to and everything yeah, like that. My assumption is this custodian. Well, specifically... there's, there's, an, there's an issue with the custodian. Because oh. he, he had blood in the corner of his mouth. It took, it took everything punched? in me to not tell you guys. He's not undead. But well, he, he's gonna get it out. He's going to hug Veal Miliana very tightly because he's just so delighted he knows now. And then after he's, he does that, he's going to turn back and say, okay. Oh, we should sorry. probably the custodian gather was bleeding? No, we should probably. he been drinking. Seisha picks up the wine glass. Oh. Sets it back down. We should probably gather up the staff and check them. Let's do that. Okay. Oh, well, that well, that's not how that works. <laughs> if I well, were to let's drink, let's just make sure the ground wasn't gross because there are more vampires here. I mean, we can just get everyone into the courtyard and see who flinches. We can just gather everybody up, and I can go up and oh, tell. Okay. Well, this building's not that large, right? Uh, brevity's sake, you gather everyone into uh, the the grand mess hall, mm -hmm. and. Open you use divine sense, mm -hmm. and there seems to be no other undead here. Besides the custodian, is there anyone else who is, I've lost two years of my life? Nope. Are there any other adults even in this building? Nope, the um, other mm -hmm. basically teachers are older kids who have grown up and kind of come from the other boarding house that have come back over here to teach, um, but they're, like teenagers and kind of this is what they do in between their duty of uh you know being a town's guardman mm -hmm. these are good people um i will remind those that were here at night and saw strange things there was a man that seemed to lurk in the shadows with a strange gate oh my god so can harold make the connection about his like sure. height and size and harold yeah. like, i know Oh, gosh, I know what's going on here. I figured it out. What? When I arrived uh, that night in the orphanage, um, I was walking through and I saw this figure kind of skulking in the shadows watching every move I made. Uh, has the same dimensions as this guy. I think it's the same guy. Okay, well, I gave him some money to help him start his journey home. Home? Oh. 
He doesn't live in Daggerford. No. Wow. Well, the suspense is killing me. Where is he from? Where was it? Crest? Cormier. 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 I kept wanting to say Kreskin, and I knew that wasn't it. Cormier. Do I know where Cormier is? Oh yeah, it's a a, a long way away. Yeah. Oh. Like if you're looking at the Sword Coast map, like if my hand is the map and like that's water deep, it's like if that's water deep, <laughs> it's like here. <laughs> Over here. <laughs> Over here. You can't even see it because yeah. it's so far away. In fact, it is so far away because every map is the Sword Coast and it's not on the Sword Coast. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Would you say he's going to have to go into the thick of it? No. <laughs> no, I would not say that. I'm dead inside. <laughs> yes! Good night, everybody. <laughs> I don't know enjoyment anymore. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Something I, I was filming last week. We're making that joke all week, and the fact that you just said it now. <laughs> yep. Yep. Oh, it's you, Dustin. Oh, in the future, uh, when when we can announce all about, but but uh, yes, um, yeah, the <sighs> strange lurking figure. And again, I will remind everybody that there was a strange lurking figure that seemed to work the tannery. A strange lurking figure that seemed to work in the orphanage, and three others that worked in the cistern. Yep. I, uh, Vinley, go ahead and make me an arcana check. Thank you. <laughs> I didn't know if that was a question I could ask. <laughs> yeah, I'll give it to you. Because you've, you've en Ooh. enough new information has come to light. 24. So you have heard rumor that if someone in enthralled by the vampire's charming gaze, drinks the vampire's blood, they are not turned into a vampire, but into a thrall. Now, I knew it. <laughs> if a vampire spawn is given the gift of the sire's blood, it turns them in true a true vampire. Yes, but, but you it must be a spawn before that happens. And if a mortal drinks it, they only become a thrall. Yep. You gotta pay your dues. You can't just skip the ladder. Uh, you gotta Alex... spend some time in a grave before you can become a vampire. Uh, <laughs> I'll explain that to everyone. Um, you you also know that if the sire is killed or if they have not fed on blood for a certain amount of time, they lo no longer be become thralls. That's good. Yes, it's... He's fine. It, well, he will be. After his digestive system works everything out. It's been a long day. Um, yeah. I suppose we should go back to our room and have a chat. Wait, but we gotta find... That... Are we using this diamond for tomorrow? Let's search around the town. If we find nothing else, then we can use this. Yeah. Okay. For brevity's sake, you walk around looking, and there is nothing in town greater than a 500 gold diamond. Oh. As a 1,000 gold diamond is rare, especially for a town as small as Daggerfield. Yeah. You do learn the history of that da uh, diamond, though. And it was the diamond found by the proprietor of uh, the tavern that Bilber, or not the tavern, uh, the long stay uh, boarding house that uh, Bilver was staying at. The Wayward Duck. Uh, the Silver Flood Inn. Mm, okay. That too. Well, it looks like and this then, is. Oh. Uh, and it was gifted to uh, Maldwin Daggerford. Okay. Which then got put into a necklace and yada yada yada. Yeah. <laughs> and then turned into an item and yada yada yada. Okay. So after that, um, well, I guess. This is gonna have to be the one. I know you guys are really bummed about it. But... No, it's okay. It's gonna be fine. We'll fix it. Okay. We have more time to fix it than fix him. Yeah. Well, we're not going to have it where we're going, but he'll be I back. I would like to look for something else while we're at. Um, Do you have any a... other gems worth a thousand gold? No, there is nothing that expensive here. Okay. Is there a tailor in town? Oh, absolutely. 
Does he have a coat comparable to my own and the color red? Sure. Looks easy enough. I, I think there needs to be some tailoring that needs to be done to it to, to make I'll it fit you properly. find something that has kind of a crimson maroon to it um, yeah. and have it fitted for me. Yeah. Is that uh, uh, because of uh, who you are and it's already just kind of spreading through town um, a bit with rumors and whatnot, um, but you have made yourselves known as, as adventurers. Um, the legend of Catman, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. You can absolutely uh, pick it up in the morning. So he can have it done. How by much? Tomorrow morning. Um, I'd say it would cost you 20 gold. Okay. Mm. Uh, Noble's vestments are 15. Oh, 15 gold. Sorry. I, I knew it was 15 or 20. We'll add five more to that. All right. So I'll 15. pick that up in the morning. Okay. Mm. All right. Uh, and... The I will of... take the necklace to a jeweler and have them remove the diamond. Easy enough. And you keep the the actual piece of it, and so yep. and yep. you have the arcane scripture memorized with your keen mind. So <laughs> if you were to get another diamond, and you could instruct that, you can you know, you're fairly certain that you can instruct a jeweler to inscript it okay. with you know, maybe Benley's help of in you know. I was about to say. I, I speak draconic too. So. Um, I was about to say I would have copied down the runes yeah, and their course. placements. Yeah, absolutely, easily doable. And just for clarification, it's nothing written in Draconic. It's just Draconic oh. is the arcane oh. rune language. Got it. Language. Yep. It's okay. the base language for for Magics. all arcane runes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Can we, for expediency, leave the diamond with the Lathander folks? And uh, no, we're gonna take it to the Duchess. Either way. Yeah. We'll take it to the Duchess. Okay. I don't trust the Lathander freaks. I, I don't like them. They're going, the Duchess will have better security for it. Mm -hmm. All right. They can't make water, Orkira. Well, they couldn't before, but now that the town is no longer under the spell of this curse or whatever. Is that your measure of morality? <laughs> no, that's my measure of power. Mm. Making water? So, yeah. Vinley, you're smart enough and you have a high enough insight and you're you're able to undertell yes they could ha they have the ability to make water but the oppression and the control yeah. of the vampire loving succubus would not allow them to create water to be able to create holy water mm -hmm. so just i vinley doesn't like the church of lathander no i get it fair <laughs> i just wanted to make sure that your intelligence is represented. Oh, I, I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Vinley has the character notes. She just doesn't like Perfect. them. <laughs> no, that's fair. Or Carol won't argue with giving the, the diamond to uh, Morwen mostly because we also have to tell Morwen where the body is. So, like, can we just send, uh, like, a message um, or something? Give it to a guard, someone we uh, trust to deliver it and then not be in public anymore? Mm -hmm. I would really like that. And that is something that's easily doable. Uh, you know, Steve, Frank, or Fred, or Jeff, or whatever Harold named him that isn't really his name, but they're <laughs> too happy and elated to not be Ter feeling <laughs> terrible. Uh, they're just like, yep, sure. And they'll actually fetch Morwen herself. She'll come to the front door of the castle, receive the diamond in hand, so that there is no you know, worry that it got misplaced. Yep. But, it and, was uh, Frank, Tim, Steve, and John, right? Sure, yeah. That was absolutely it, and I'm shocked that yeah. you know that. Yeah, no, see, <laughs> I, uh, I have a thing for names. I remember all of them really well. <laughs> oh, <you're> okay. <laughs> We will head back to the tavern at this point. Yeah. I will tell Morrowind before we leave that the people I saw in the, in the cisterns are most likely thralls, and someone should go check on them as soon as possible before they run out of. Uh, there was already, effort. already guards who had gone down yeah, there to yeah. do. Just she that. lets you know that they found uh, three uh, people passed out, okay. and are being tended to. Yep. So, we do this tomorrow, and then we head to the mountains. Are we? Are we in the rooms at this point? Yeah. Yeah. So, well, yeah. Absolutely. Before, before we leave the bar, like on the way, I want to just pick up the strongest alcohol that they'll have. 
It's just the. I think it's just the beer. The one. Yeah, I, they just have the one. But no, Harold's got Harold's, Harold's got your back. Harold, Harold and me, y'all bought boobs, right? Oh, yep. of course we got boobs. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hold on. And we will. You see some we weird face shit. Deuce. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> Harold's gonna reach into his bag, and he's going to produce. Uh, he thinks he's grabbing his bottle, and he pulls out a jar that is labeled Griffin Grease. Oh, uh, that's not, um, well, that's for me. And I put it back in the bag. Is that a griffin? No, but I got its grease. So, uh, You know what that's for, right? Uh, I'm assuming hair. Baking and bacon. No, it's, it's for, um, saddles and, and equipment for animals. Well, I'm going to use it in hilarious ways that make me smile. Because that's what Griffin it Grease is really It smells awful. For. Yeah, I, I know. I smelled it directly, and that was a huge mistake. Almost threw up. Yeah. yeah. No, you have to waft that kind of thing. Yeah, I, I did not waft. So no. um, let's all take a moment. No more jokes about Griffin Grease, and I will take out my a bottle of wine I'm sure I have and set it down. So um, first of all... Um, be- before we start, I, I have to give this to you, Seisha. And she puts down the portable hole and reaches in and a skeletal arm holds a book up, hands it to her, and the title is The Leviathan of Judas. Um, this is one of the many books I found uh, investigating. Uh, here, I have many more for you, for your library. Did you just say a skeleton arm comes out of the hole holding a book? Uh, yeah, there's, yeah. There's, there's, <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. I know it doesn't make up, but I couldn't forgive myself if I left them behind. Everything's going to be okay. That's funny, because that was the first thing I was going to say, is that I think we can all agree this uh this mission more than any mission we did maybe other than getting actually in the vault really tested us and pushed us and it put us in all of us in very uncomfortable places um i'd like to apologize for any deception i've made towards any of you um because i frankly i lied a lot to investigate some things and i did it because at the time it felt like it felt like we were really teetering and i didn't want us to fall off so but your instincts paid off didn't they they did but that doesn't make it okay that i lied to anybody here so i apologize or uh, grabs the bottle pops the cork downs like a glass worth of it puts whoa. the bottle down and says all right let's start with that what else have any of you not told me and then she very pointedly looks at voss i'm waiting for your question what are you doing with the sword? Why was it so important to get that you were willing to threaten the woman we were trying to save? Whoa, First why, off, I, there wasn't any threats. That was the kindest thing I could have said to her in that moment. Oh, I guess there was threats. All right, well, now I'm listening. That is a woman who lives through war and battle. We had just helped her to her feet, left her weak, left her beaten. She needed something to drive. Did you see the fire in her eyes, Okira, when I said that? Yeah, I got that in my eyes now. What are you doing with the sword? I'm giving it to Jarl Axel. Why? Because he wants it. I don't think I knew Jarl about Axel... that. Jarl Axel. I... No, you did not. None, None of us did. Jarl Axel is one of the most important allies we have. It is important to keep him happy. Otherwise, everything we have done to undermine the underground in the city is dead. And it was important enough for you to do it, but not to tell us that you needed to do it. Yes. Because I needed Uh, to make sure it left the party. And you didn't trust us to believe you that it was important. We just had a conversation about what to do with this necklace, too. And we ultimately chose to destroy it. Yes. This had to go to Jarlaxel. This was why? not a party question. I just said why. Because he because wanted it. Was that because the only reason? He Are we aware that. that every ruse that we have pulled goes down the drain if he decides to leave in an instant? I don't care. 
I don't care about any of that. I trust the things you all want. I trust that I'm here to help the things you want. If you tell, if you want to keep the necklace and not give the diamond, then that's what we'll do. If you want to send the sword because you think it's important, that's fine. I'll, if if these are important to you, that's fine, but I can't help you if I don't know what you're trying to do. And if she had said no in that moment because you threatened her, how could we help? How could Girl. we have known that it was important to help? This and then, situation? As if was... she is like on a roll and super pissed, looks at Harold okay. and says, and so you are just gonna go off and not tell anybody what you found at the orphanage? Not tell anybody after all of us had already talked about issues at the orphanage? He just I said I was suspicious. I, I yes. came back and did tell you. I just couldn't tell you around Voss. Valid point. I, Harold, I was Harold compromised. I knew Harold went. And I, when thought, we... I, I thought word would get out. I just told somebody immediately. It was and and before by the time everything had gone around the next day, we I mean that we went we went into the castle the next day. And I, I... or Kira, you knew because remember I was saying I could go there to uh, yeah. try to smooth things over, and you were going to go with me. And that we never happened together. until it no. was too until no. it was after. We kind of. Well, at Brandon the time, we all thought there were two problems. We didn't assume they were all one problem. We thought, we'll go deal with the demon now and then go deal with mother after. So at the time, it didn't seem as important because it was like, well, we got to deal with the Duchess now so that we can figure out what's going on with mother. We didn't assume at the time they'd both be in the building. Harold made the right call. I honestly don't see why you're upset. I'm he did the a... smart thing. I feel like I've spent the last hour discovering things everybody already knew because no one wanted to tell anybody stuff because you're all keeping secrets. And whether you had good reasons or not, it's quite frustrating to be surprised by your own friends. I understand Fair enough. that, but- I'm sorry about the Catman thing. I really wanted to tell you all, but Boz made me promise. I did ask her not to say anything. The Catman thing is magical and I'm so happy you told us. But Look, Akira, Akira has a point. If we're in this together, we have to be in it together. That's just tough. It I'm is a, tough, but that's I'm a part spy of being for a living. Friends. That's very difficult. I get that, but that's part of being friends and putting our lives on the line for each other. There are things I literally cannot tell you, or I would doom nations. Like that, you have to understand. It's like. There are things I can't say. As a Harper, I, there are things I cannot tell you. Y'all are just going to have to accept that. I if, made that mistake in public and made innocent people pay the price for it as well. I'm not saying that I'm... I, I certainly hate keeping secrets. I hate it. Because, frankly, I love to talk, and that's, that's a big problem if you're a secret keeper. <laughs> but at the same time, I took an oath. If I'm doing what I think is the right thing, if I'm... You know, I didn't leave that tavern as just Harold, you know, I was a Harper. And the fact was, I couldn't let on to Voss, who I thought was under influence, that I was going to the person that was influencing him to intimidate her. I and being the person he was investigating, I completely understand and agree with his decision. Right, but you also fought a were-rat by yourself, and you went up against someone we didn't know the power of by yourself. Sure. That was a mistake. How is it not a mistake in this situation? What if it in that case a fight? I, we just learned she had the walls under her. Because when we go into a place, let's think for a moment that this woman was innocent. Shove her up against the wall, put her in a zone of truth, and just pull the truth out of her. If she was innocent, that would have been violating everything in her mind. Slave masters would have loved to have that spell, by the way. Ouch, boss. Did you not realize that you used a magic potion earlier, right? Yes. So we're all- As much as we are a group, we are also individuals and that also has to be respected. We are not one singular group mind and we never will be. And this idea that we have to say everything that's on our mind, everything we think and everything to the rest of the group is damning. It's oppressive. I'm not asking to know everything. I just feel like how many times in the last couple of days 
people gone off to go do something by themselves because they thought they could they needed to do it alone when we're all here to help each other keep keep your state secrets i just want to know when i'm gonna walk into unhallowed ground and orkira gets up and walks out Well, she'll fly up to the roof and she'll sit there for a while thinking about the contract she's made to save a soul. This is all shitty. We're in a shitty situation and we're not all going to agree on everything. Agreed. Uh, but that much having been said, um, I, for my part, am very sorry, uh, especially to you, Seja, because I was extremely rude to you. In a, in a moment that felt like we were all we were all doomed is what it felt like and I thought to myself at least uh, there's an opportunity to save Venley and I, I went way off the handle on you it was unacceptable because the same reason that I was upset uh, with what Venley said I more or less did to you which was say I don't care about how you feel we have to do this thing to save someone. That's not fair. It's not nice. This is the second time I've yelled at you. Um, and the first time I felt justified and was wrong. But this time, even when I was doing it, I knew I was wrong. So I'm very sorry. And uh, and I'm also very sorry about any deception. I did what I felt was right. I'm not always right. And I don't know that I was right this time, but it worked. So, you know, at least we got out. And I think maybe instead of taking this as an opportunity for all of us to feel more estranged from one another, we need to take this as an opportunity to say to ourselves, mm -hmm. we need to celebrate what makes each of us so incredible and makes us capable of doing these unbelievable things that we have all done. We just saved our second city. Harold, I don't feel more estranged. Even in the heat of the moment, I don't feel more estranged from any of you. Even in the disagreements we have, I don't feel more estranged. Mm -hmm. I expect these disagreements to arise. I expect everyone here to make some decisions independent of the rest of the group. And sometimes those decisions are going to come back to bite us in the ass, yes. But the alternative is we do nothing. Sometimes there's no time to think. Sometimes you don't want to hurt people. Sometimes there are decisions that need to be made, as I said, in the spur of the moment. If we hold everyone feet to the, everyone's feet to the fire from making an independent decision, we can't even take a step forward. That's the way it is. I turn to Vinley. I don't blame you for doing the seance. And I don't blame you for what happened there. The only thing I can blame you for is agreeing to something you could have gotten out of. But as for what happened beforehand, I have no ill will on you on that. And even then, I understand you well enough to know why you did it. And the fact that I'm still here, still willing to go on this quest, still willing to play, and I turn to Viomeliana, the Catman of Daggerford, to get us out of a spot, shows that I'm not estranged from any of you. I don't feel in any way that, if anything, this crucible has brought us closer together. We should always call each other out on our shit. There's nothing wrong with that. I agree. I don't mind that Okira doesn't like what I did, but I'll justify my decisions 10 times out of 10 if I feel that's the right thing to do. And I know all of you do the same. We, we all make mistakes. We all, not all of us, but some of us made mistakes while we were here in Daggerford, myself included. And instead of dwelling on the mistakes we've made, we have to take the lessons we can learn from them, move forward, and keep going. We're here for Vio Miliana. Tomorrow we're gonna finish everything here in Daggerford and we're gonna get back on the journey and we're gonna do everything we can for her. And you guys are never going to stop being my best friends. I love all of you. Um, I love all of you like family. And the only thing that could ever hurt me in this world is losing you or all of us 
going our separate ways. And whatever it takes to keep us together, I swear to all of you, I will always do that. And if there is ever a moment you feel I'm pushing us away or I'm making a bad decision, just like Voss said, please call me out. I want to be a BFG. This is who I am. I can't be a bard in taverns anymore. There's more pressing matters out there in the world that need our attention, and we are the only ones that can do it. And frankly, I wouldn't want to be doing it with anyone else. Maybe if Petunia was here, that'd be cool too. And he grins and he's like, now, if there's anything left to say, I'm going to go climb on that roof as best I can and go sit with Orkira to help her make her feel better. Um, I have a confession. Um, Voss, the item I gave you does nothing. It's just a hand. You gave him a hand? Yes. Why, does he, why did you give him a hand? I wanted him. I wanted him to hold a trinket. I pull out the goblin hand slowly, look down, feeling betrayed. That is and gross. Then look back up at her and just say, "Why?" <laughs> a trinket of what exactly? It's a mummified goblin hand. Why did you tell me this? I was feeling particularly funny. I was bolstered by Harold's personality. Don't I, put uh, me on this. I had nothing to do with that hand, dude. I swear <laughs> to you, I had nothing to do with that hand. You but do realize hilarious. that in a pinch, if Okira had sunlight and it was the night and a full moon, I would have thrown that thing into the middle and expected a goblin to pop out and protect us all, right? Is that what you told him it does? That is exactly I'm, what she said. And I'm I had no roof. reason to doubt her. I'm going on the roof. This is the greatest meeting I've ever had. Uh, wow. Man, you're the cat man and you got duped. You know what? We can make a pact right now. I promise to not tell you any weird lies about strange magical artifacts that summon goblinoids if you do the same for me. Absolutely. I okay. promise to make weird legends out of, out, of, out of all of you in every town we go to. Yes. Yeah. All right, I'm going to try to figure out if there's a roof access and Harold will go out, and when he clearly doesn't find a roof access, he'll cast Fly to get himself up there. And, uh, it, you know, he doesn't say anything. He just sits next to Orkira and wraps an arm around her shoulders. She'll sit there for a while, also quiet, and just going to lean into him a little bit, and then finally sigh and say, I know that was selfish. I'm sorry. It wasn't selfish. It if was. You... I, I'm angry because I hate not being able to help that's that's just who you are you're a helper you've always been a helper you've been to every plane of existence basically helping people anywhere you found them yeah. and the difference between where you were and where you are now is that things here it's not like plane hopping you know it's not like the bag things here are complicated and messy and disgusting I miss sometimes hopping around with Briv and all them. It was great. Uh, that's also messy and complicated just in a different way. Yeah, in a very different way. But for me, it was a lot more um, just, oh my God, everything's exploding. Oh my God, the world's explode. Oh no, I'm a, I, my leg's gone. Um, yeah. Cal Calamari, I'm not going to say the rest because I don't, don't know don't, if don't, yeah. or not. But, um, but I still, I'm really glad you're here. And I never want to do anything to make you feel like you shouldn't be. So I'm going to do more to keep you in the loop because nothing makes me more unhappy than lying to my friends. It's, you know, it's just, I'm not that man anymore. And you helped me get there. Six years in a bag, you turned me from a piece of shit. To me, the real me, that's all you. You and did that. I just helped along the way. I couldn't have done it without you. And just like that, we can't do this without you. So oh, let's go get oh. hammered. Oh. Uh, What's up? I appreciate it. You want me to fly you down? I should probably say this to the whole group. 
I think you you don't have to fly me down. I still got a couple minutes left. Uh, oh, okay, good. Yeah. But uh, if you want to say it to the whole group, I'll, I got your back. I, yeah. I, I think we could all use a big drink. Yeah. Let's go downstairs and uh, and, and say what we got to say and drink. I like this plan. Oh, come on uh, down. Uh, before she leaves, uh, hey, Akira. Yeah. You know I love you, right? You're like my one of my closest friends. I, I love you too. And I, I know. I understand if you can't tell me everything. I know that. I just. I could have told you that. I'm sorry. And I will. I will not be as upset when people can't tell me things. I, I, I get that. And that's the thing I should say to everybody. Because well, hey. I, I want to help, but I don't want to impede on people when they need to keep their secrets. So I know. Well, let's go talk to them. Okay. And they'll both fly back down and come back up the stairs. I hey. found someone. Hey. I went and brooded for a little bit. I'm not good at it. Harold made me feel better pretty quick. Hey, listen, I'm sorry. I just want to help. And then when I don't know things, I f that was selfish. I wanted to help. And because I didn't know, I couldn't. I don't want you to ever feel like you have to tell me everything, especially if you think it's important that you keep it secret. But that was my all. part. If I rankled you or anyone else here, I apologize. It's obviously not my intention. I think we're all a little hurt, a little scared, a little sad, and a little relieved this is all over. And we're all about to be a little drunk. So why don't we all enjoy this wine, the bottles for everybody, what's left of it, and I'll go get cups for everybody. And we're all gonna have a big drink night with, with our friends and family. I think that's going to do us a lot of good tonight. Everybody on board? Yes. Can, I, I like, uh, we need a BFG song. I'm going to write a BFG song drunk off my ass tonight. <laughs> I need to write a song about us and how great we are. Here, I'll help you and give you some inspiration. I'm going to reach into my bag and pull out my alchemy jug. I'm going to say, yeah, you want beer or wine? Wine, wine, wine. 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 The, elf, put, the elf side of my body is entirely for wine. I'm gonna put a, the gallon jug down on the table. <laughs> All okay. right, I'm gonna make dinner. Uh, go Hell ahead, yeah. Roll it. roll it. While she is pulling out food, I lean over to her Kira, and I I just whisper, from one holy woman to another, we're allowed to be selfish sometimes, and then I start drinking. And I, and I just, when you lean over and when you say that, Orkira doesn't respond, except uh, she reaches out with a wing and gives you a hug. A modest meal this evening. Okay. So she's a little out of it, so. But it's not bad at all, yeah. but it's not as lavish as it typically is. It beats as the oversalted stew you're going to get downstairs. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it beats the hard the, tack I'm uh, going to create. Yeah. <laughs> Over the night, Harold tries to create a song. You all kind of mend your emotional wounds. Um, and then eventually you all find yourselves asleep. Question. Mm hmm As the night is approaching, I want to give one overlook at the bar patrons as they're leaving. Are any of them wearing a tricorn hat? That looks nice. Go ahead and roll high or low. Say high or low. Yeah, high. say high or low. They are not. I go back inside. Okay. But eventually you all find rest. And it is in your rest you find yourself sequestered into a dream once again. Oh no. But it is not individual or foreboding as you all see yourselves as a group in a sea of storms with no body of water or land or discernible sky or celestial beings in the heavens, whether it be above you or below you, just a torrent of a hundred differently high uh, contrasted vibrant colors 
deepening in moving shadow and light mixed with metallic swirls. Pillars of clouds held aloft at every angle, thread in every direction that lead to everywhere and nowhere. A nexus between worlds. Violent flashes of light pulse through the clouds above and below and pillars of smoke all around as if stuck in a perpetual maelstrom, but you feel no wind. From your chest emits a thin, glowing beacon of silver light, roughly around the thickness of yarn, and slowly fades away imperceivably out of view into nothingness. What are you doing? I follow that thread. Yeah. We can we, you said we're all here together? You're all here together, and you're almost floating. Is this what dreams are? I don't enjoy the two dreams that I've ever had. This is not fun. What is happening? I don't know. Let's 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 go together. You try you try He's to take like, a step, and you just fight, fight, fighting like yep. we. I Carol, Carol just flips so end over end and uh, is just kind of like twirling uh, in place. Uh, I'm in my wings. Cool. He's okay. having a blast. She's not only having a blast. But she's completely unaware that it's actually you guys and not just like her dream that she made up all this stuff. I reach out and take Voss and Benley's hand. Mm -hmm. Or Kara, can you get Harold and V? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And Kara, start give me flying forward. As you f you flap the wings and you f and or Kara, you flap and you s just stay in place, flapping. You go nowhere. Harold's gonna look around and go. Uh, I'm just gonna. Hello, hello. We're we're here now. If you had a meeting, we're like, maybe we're late. I don't know. My Wait. armed. Can I pull the string. Wait. My armed. You go to hold the string, oh. and it runs through your hand. Um, and as you look for, you are clothed, but you don't have any of your items on you. Damn. If I turn, does the string continue to go in the same direction, or does it move? It it goes in the in the same direction. Like okay. you turn and now it's behind you. Do all of our strings go in the same direction? They do. And Harold, as you call out into the ether, you see a flash of light just brighten through the sky. And in that flash of light, you see a grand figure in it. But it's like a silhouette. And this figure inspires the will to fight like a war general marching with his soldiers into war. We're being blessed. That? What? Is, We're is being that blessed. Tempest? <sighs> yes. Another flash of light, brighter than the first, nearly blinds you all, as it seems to be the light that formed into the shape of a figure that inspires hope, like an, an inspiring leader of virtue. And that one, it did not look like a silhouette. It looked like the light itself formed the figure. I'll call like out in so I'm going to call out in Celestial and say, Hi, can, can we help you? And then finally, a uh, silver and gold streak rings out like a sharp clang of small pieces of metal instead of thunder, and a light you see an elegance that washes away all your fears as you feel, no matter what, luck is on your side. Oh, it's time more. Shh, shh, just enjoy it, just enjoy it. And as you all just float in this vast sea of stars, in your heads, You hear three voices speaking as one. You all have proven yourselves worthy to be known, known as, as heroes. heroes. And as Hero says, it's almost like thunder erupts, kind of echoing <laughs> through the sky as another flash, and you see all three of those images and feelings fill you. Prevailers, prevailers against, against the, the darkness. darkness. And you see it all just light up, emanating from the being of light. That, and their forms fade into the clouds. It's not 
uh, with every flash. Willing, Willing to, to fight, fight to the end, no, no matter, matter the cost. cost. Willing, Willing to see hope in the darkness of times by seeing the faintest light in the, the darkest shadows. And by daring to face great evils, or even use them against others to see what fate holds for you in the end. And there's this ringing of what sounds like coins just being thrown across a table. For these deeds in Daggerford, you have the blessing of war. Yeah! Of light and luck through tempests, Lathanda, and Timora. And with that, you are all bestowed a blessing of your choice that we will send to you. And as this dream washes over you, you awaken to a sunrise in Daggerford. The sounds of birds chirping, children laughing, and hope in the hearts of many. We're gonna end tonight's episode there. Perfect. Perfect. I'm oh. just kidding, I love dreams. They're the best thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Elves are really missing out. Never, never had a dream before. First dream, three gods show up are like, bless, bless, bless. <laughs> it's all downhill from here, dreams. Yep. <laughs> and uh, we will send that, and you can take the week to choose um, uh, all of the different blessings, and we'll let you know so the audience knows what those blessings are. There's the blessing of protection, which will give you a plus one to AC. Blessing of Valor, which is plus one to uh, weapon attack rolls. A blessing of Luck. You will gain one luck point a day. Oh. A blessing of Celerity. Walking speed is increased by 10 feet. Blessing of Magus. Plus one to attack spells or spell save DCs. Your choice. And then V. You and only you could be blessed with the blessing of Valhalla. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Once a 10 day, you can summon 1d4 plus one berserker spirits as oh, you nice. summon your ancestors to fight beside you. Oh, <laughs> sick. So um, we'll send those to you to look over. You can choose one um, of those and then we'll add it to your characters. Uh, if you have not done so uh, already, please enter hashtag beyond hashtag Eldritch. We are drawing those names any second now. Well, that's just a big, big session, y'all. Oh. I just met, I have now met four gods. Gotta oh, collect them all. <laughs> <laughs> we met gods, y'all. I earned the blessing of gods. They weren't the right ones, but it'll work. <laughs> it'll happen. It's gonna happen. They already like me. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> See, you're making, you're making your way. Mm -hmm. Earning your stripes, mm -hmm. working up the totem pole. I just have to prove myself to the elves, which is hard. Hey, I get luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> Look, gods talk. Gods talk, all right? Yeah. Uh, sometimes, it's not, it's, sometimes it's not friendly talk. I was about right? to say, you think but the they talk. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have a feeling if either of our gods, if any of our gods had had a problem with this, then we wouldn't have been there, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, those gods don't know who I am yet. We'll meet them later. <laughs> uh, I was right. like, no, uh, no, no, no. We have our winners. Uh, winner oh. of the D and D Beyond Players Bundle is Buzz Lightyear. Oh hey. yeah. That's it for Gary. <laughs> <laughs> and the winner of the Eldritch Foundry miniature is uh, Tabor Reigns. All right. Ooh, uh, congrats Rains. to you. I will be in touch via the Twitch chat. So please make sure your, your Twitch whispers are available so that I can send you that message. And we will see you next week as we finally leave Daggerford, maybe. I don't know, maybe we'll just, I mean, we got blessed by the gods. Maybe we'll just stay here for another week or two. <laughs> <That's pretty laughs> yeah. Daggerford yeah. campaign, here we go. <laughs> I just be excellent, to, be excellent to each other. And may you always roll with advantage. Good night, everybody. Uh...